all the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Forget the ramps and hassles when hauling. They are built to tilt. Tilt bed trailers made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. We're excited to now offer one of the best tilt bed trailers on the market, ranging from 22 to 28 feet in length. Like everything we manufacture, these trailers are built to work, last, and make your life easier. All with confidence when you hook up to a tilt bed trailer made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. Visit us online today at HolsteinMFG.com. Tiger Vision Equipment and Exact Emerge Planner Technology is here to help you maximize your yield and efficiency, along with a proven 8 bushel per acre yield advantage because of the pinpoint accuracy of seed depth and placement. You can cover 50 acres per hour without compromising your stand. We know the risk of planting outside the optimal planting window, so don't let the weather control your bottom line. When you partner with AgriVision Equipment, you get access to the best service and technology support in the area. And visit any one of our 15 locations today to learn more about our large selection of new and used planters. AgriVision Equipment, focused on your future. Reliance means being dependable. And when it comes to comfort in your home, you want Reliance from a place you can trust with a product you can count on. That's why Marcus Lumber stocks Reliance brand water heaters. Because with Reliance in the name, it's the brand you can trust. Marcus Lumber has been stocking and installing Reliance water heaters for decades. So choose the name you trust for your home. Choose Marcus Lumber and Reliance water heaters. Whether you are combining, hauling grain, or heating your home, fuel powers the fall. When it comes to energy, you need a company who is trustworthy, understands your needs, and who delivers to you. A company who is local, reliable, and affordable. That company is Ag State. Ag State Energy is clean, comfortable, convenient, while staying competitively priced for our customers. Give Laura Sanguin or Seth Duff a call for all your energy needs. 
MHI and CUSO of Cherokee are on the move, expanding, and in need of residential treatment workers, psychiatric security specialists, and LPNs. We deal with disorders that you can't see. You get to help people who are in desperate need of help, and helping those people actually helps the community as well. The benefits here, I think, are top-notch. That was why I came here. To learn more and to apply, visit governmentjobs.com. Hello and welcome to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Jays basketball is on the air for an unscheduled home game between Galen Catholic and Trinity Christian. Trinity Christian with a leak in their gymnasium forcing this game here back at Galen Catholic for the second time this season. Matt Schilling here with you on the call tonight as the 1 and 14 Jays take on the 3 and 11 Tigers. We're looking forward to a close ball game, a ball game which Trinity Christian won last time around. We'll be back after this. You're watching Jays and Tigers on Fuller Digital Solutions and fullerdigital.net. Staying healthy means enjoying life's best moments. And the best way to stay healthy is to make your routine appointments. Whether you have new symptoms or it's time for your annual exam, the providers at Floyd Valley Healthcare know and listen to you. So you'll get the care that you need. We help you stay healthy by providing preventative care, finding health concerns early, managing chronic conditions, and connecting you with specialty care close to home. Don't miss a single special moment. Make your appointment today. When it's time to choose a bank, the choice is easy. Prime Bank is the bank for you. With all the conveniences you want in a bank, including a mobile app and online account opening, Prime Bank also offers you pick checking with no monthly fees or minimum balances. And the best part is you get paid for everyday banking transactions. That's right. Prime Bank's you pick checking. We pay you for your everyday checking account transactions. Choose Prime Bank. It's the bank for you. Earn more your way with Prime Bank. Member FDIC. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you on the call tonight. Just me solo, Drew Bickford, my normal compatriot, heading down to the uh, Creighton game here tonight. So hopefully he's going to enjoy that. I believe he is on his way down there with Caden and company. So we appreciate you all for joining us here tonight on, like I said, an unscheduled it was on the schedule, but just an unscheduled home game for the Jays. Some things coming up here at Galen Catholic. There is a mattress fundraiser, and it goes to benefit the Galen Catholic Band. It is on Sunday, March 3rd from 10 to 4 here at the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. All mattress sizes are available, including custom. There's going to be 25-plus mattresses on display with all comfort levels. They're all brand new with a 1- to 20-year warranty. Delivery and shipping is available. Cash, check, and credit card is accept accepted, and financing is available. You're going to find both beds, bed frames, bed sheets, uh, bases, bean bags, massage products, mattress protectors, as well as luxury pillows. You can find out more about that from Miss um, Cruz, the band director. And guess what? The chocolate fundraiser is going to be coming back to Galen Catholic. It is the order forms are out and available. They are due back on February 12th. Chocolate distribution will happen to the students on Friday, March 1st from 3 to 6 p.m. in the library. If you have any questions, and I'll talk more about this later, if you have any questions, make sure you email chocolatesales at galencatholic.org. We will now turn this over to our public address announcer. Good evening. Welcome to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym here at Galen Catholic for tonight's boy-girl varsity doubleheader. Let's extend a special welcome to our guests, the Tigers from Trinity Christian. Galen Catholic Schools encourage positive sportsmanship and behavior at the game tonight. By practicing good sportsmanship, you will help make tonight's game one to remember. Let's give a hand to our officials for tonight's game. Brad Van Rokel, 
Joel Cranbrink, and Kurt Strouth. Now let's welcome the coaches. The Tigers are coached by Mike DeJager, assisted by Kyle Vanderbrink and Leah Gritters. The Jays are coached by Brandon Shecker, assisted by Brian Kolbeck. And now the starters. For the Tigers, a senior, number two, Mesa Cleveringa. For the Jays, a junior, number three, Rizea Sitzman. For the Tigers, a junior, number four, Karen Eidenbogard. For the Jays, a junior, number 10, Haley Poland. For the Tigers, a senior, number 12, Micaiah DeJager. For the Jays, a senior, number 32, Larissa Poland. For the Tigers, a junior, number 20, Kirsten Brummel. For the Jays, a junior, number 42, Sammy Zubrod. For the Tigers, a junior, number 44, Madeline Viss. And for the Jays, a senior, number 50, Nevea Hudson. Please stand and remove your hats while Aspen Mosier sings our national anthem. early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets right glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Catholic in Lamars, Iowa instills respect and Christian values in a caring environment for students preschool through 12th grade. Teachers and staff go above and beyond to provide a high quality education and are dedicated to student success. We are a community striving to live God's word each day through academics, service opportunities, athletics, and so much more. Galen Catholic School, in partnership with Spalding Catholic School, all are welcome to experience excellence in education and leadership through Christ. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you on the call tonight. As we are getting ready for tonight's opening tip. Ball being walked out to the center circle. Here's the jump and the opening tip is controlled by Cleveringa. DeJager kicked left to Cleveringa, drives left side baseline, kicked out to Viz. Viz in the paint, throws it out to Utenbugard. And that first basket is by Madeline Viz. And the Tigers take a 2-0 run or 2-0 lead here early in the ball game. Little for, full court pressure. Now to Poland. Poland in the front court. Tries to get it down low. Not able to. Cleveringa now kicks it to the corner. Oh, 
That one swatted out of bounds will remain Tiger basketball. 7-13 off the clock here in the first. Tigers with a 2-0 lead. Cleveringa near the top of the key. Bounces right, stops, pick up the dri- picks up the dribble, pass it to Brummel. Brummel drives to the drives in the paint herself, and then the foul is going to be on Sammy Zubra. That's her first, team's first. And it was on the floor, so the ball is inbounded to Brummel. Brummel on the baseline, and they're going to have a jump ball or a dual possession and it'll be Jay's basketball off of that. Working on getting you all the stuff that you want here, all the stuff that you are accustomed to out of our broadcast. Realize we have a little freezing in our picture. We'll try to get that fixed as Hodgson puts up the shot off the back iron. No good. Rebound by DeJager. DeJager brings it into the front court. With a left hand, stops, tosses it to Cleveringa. Cleveringa, hand off, down low. Tries to get it to a cutter on the baseline. Now to Viz, cross court pass to Cleveringa. Drives left side of the baseline, puts it up and in. Cleveringa with her first two points of the ball game. Cleveringa, and it is a 4-0 lead for the Tigers. To Hodgson now, Hodgson to Zubrod, Zubrod right side of the paint, kicks it out to Hodgson, now Haley Poland. Haley Poland near the top of the key, left side of the baseline, to Larissa Poland, Larissa on the baseline, kicks it out, Zubrod, Zubrod had Viz in her face, spins, puts up a left hand, shot does not fall, but will go to the line, and Madeline Viz will pick up her first personal. First one is up and no good for Zubrod. Second free throw attempt is off the front iron, no good. Brought up by Cleveringa. And a travel turns the ball over, 5.43 left to go here in the first. It's 4-0 in favor of the Tigers. Hodgson gets it over over the timeline, bounce pass to Zubrod, back to Hodgson, three, no good. The save goes out of bounds. Nice effort by Sitzman. Ball is inbounded to Cleveringa. Cleveringa brings it up over the timeline. DeJager passes right and is fouled quickly by Grace Kellen. Another foul here. That one on Hodgson. Wooten Bugard. That one's going to hit the safety strap, and it will be Jay's basketball. Larissa Poland with the inbound, and the Jays facing the full court press of the Tigers. Something that we faced last time also as Larissa Poland spins to Zubrod. 
Sitzman stops at the free throw line, bounce pass to Poland. Hello to Jeff in Indiana. Appreciate you tuning in tonight. It's bounce pass into Zubrod. She puts up the first points of the game for the Jays. It's 4-2 in favor of the Tigers. 4.28 left to go here in the first quarter. Sorry for the glitchiness here as that first shot goes up. No good. Rebound put back and in for Cleveringa. Mayasa Cleveringa now with six. That one's out of bounds. And a sub for Brummel is Willow Postma. Long inbound pass to Sitzman. Sitzman. Hands it off to Poland. Poland. Jump back from Sitzman, and that one was blocked by Dieger. Dieger will bring it up the floor. And that three is good from Karen Newton Bugard. It's 9 to 2 in favor of Trinity Christian. Good from Grace Kellen. It's 9-5. I'm working on trying to get our stuttering situation under control here. I apologize here in the first quarter. 3-0-9 left. It's 9-5 in favor of the Tigers. Again, this was an unscheduled home game. It was a scheduled game on the docket. It got moved to be a Jays home game after there was some leaking in the gym up at Hull Trinity Christian. Bounce pass in, download, spinning from Viz, no good rebound by Larissa Poland. Poland will bring it up the floor. Down low, Schmidt puts it up, no good, rebound, fought for, and Viz comes away with it. Viz with it now, just in front of the free throw line. Ball fought for. We're going to have a held ball, and it's going to remain in favor of Trinity Christian. Ball is inbounded. Uten Bugard now kicked right. Viz at the free throw line, bounces left. To Cleveringa. Cleveringa kicks right. Uten Bugard for three off the front iron. No good. Rebound fought for. And Cleveringa came away with it. And nice job by Bella Schrader coming away with that rebound. Schmidt tried to get it to Sitzman. Instead throws it away. And Brummel goes coast to coast with it. And is fouled by Schmidt. Emerson, Emerson Schmidt picks up her first. Team's fourth. Brummel will go to the line to shoot two. First one is up off the side iron, no good. Poland and Schmidt go to the bench. Paulson and Haley Poling come into the ball game. Brummel puts up the second off the side iron. No good. Rebound by Schrader. Sitzman guarded closely, pointing out where she wants the screen at. Kicks it left to Haley Poland. Haley drives toward the baseline, and we're going to have a foul on Willow Postma. That's going to be her first, team second. 152 left to go in the quarter. 9-5 the lead in favor of Trinity Christian. Quick moving first quarter. Sitzman needs to get it in. Gets it into Haley Poland. Top of the key. Three off the iron. No good. Rebound by Ava Klein. Dieger. Makaya Dieger with it now. Dribbles right of the circle. Puts up a jumper from 16. No good. Rebound. Fought for. Come away with it. Did Klein. 
Brummel and poked away. Zubrod picks up her second of the first quarter. It's going to be the team's fifth, and so that will send Postma to the line to shoot two. See if we can bring the shot clock back in here for you without too much stuttering of the video as the first one is knocked down by Willow Postma. 10-5. Scoreboard brought to you by Ag State. Bottom line brought to you by Schuster Trucking. Of course, we appreciate all these local fine sponsors for bringing you Tiger and Jay basketball. Willow Postma knocks down the second. It's 11-5. 134 left to go here in the first quarter. Sitzman dribbles ahead. Hodgson gets it to Paulson, and she is fouled by Ava Klein. That's going to be her first. It's going to be the team's third. A rapidly moving first quarter. And that one quickly up and in for the Jays. Hodgson. 11 7. It was a nice inbound play. In the corner. Now Viz. Cross court. Nice ball movement as Klein makes a move toward the basket. And we're going to have a dual possession. It will be Jays basketball. 104 left to go here in the first. Jays trail this one 7 to 11. As Paulson ahead to Sitzman. Sitzman over the timeline has a trailer. Puts up the jumper. No good. And Viz comes up with a rebound. Ahead to Dieger. Dieger will slowly bring it up over the timeline with 50 ticks left to go in the first. De Jaeger passes right, and Brummel passes left to Viz. Back to De Jaeger. Viz tries to get it down low and throws it away. It'll be eight tenths of a second. Shot clock to game clock here to end to end the first quarter. Haley Poland gets it into Sitzman. Rizea able to get it over the timeline. Loses control, picked up by Ava Klein. Klein ahead. She gets it to Postma, and Postma puts it up and in. Postma now with four. It's 13 to seven in favor of the Tigers, and that ball is thrown away. Hodgson able to come away with it. 15 left on the game clock. Larissa Poland with it now, near the top of the key. Free throw line jumper off the back of iron. Able to get the soft roll to fall. 13-9, and at the buzzer, no good. So after one quarter, the Jays trail the Tigers 13-9. We'll be back after this with the second quarter action. You're watching Fuller Digital Solutions. Since the 1980s, Colbeck Incorporated has been a family-run business providing their customers with quality wood and feed grinding services throughout Northwest Iowa. Colbeck Incorporated knows that your time is valuable and they pride themselves on getting the job done in a prompt and reliable fashion. Local cattle feeders have been relying on Colbeck Incorporated hay grinding for 30 years and Brian and Kevin are proud of their partnerships they've built with their customers. Whether it's grinding, mulch, or hauling, call Colbeck Incorporated today and see what they can do for you. AgriVision Equipment has you covered with a wide selection of John Deere tractors in the area. Our experts can help match you with the right equipment at the right price. Utilize one of our convenient pre-built packages or build and customize your own with our JD Buy Online site. Need financing? No problem. Apply online in five minutes or less. Our team is ready to find the package for you. Don't settle for less. Shop in-store or online at agrivisionequipment.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schoen here with you tonight. Our between game interview will be with development director Amy Jungers as she talks about all the upcoming events here at Galen Catholic.
Foul, walk with the ball. It'll be a turnover. Larissa Poland gets it into Hodgson. Hodgson ahead to Zubrod. Zubrod stops just short and hands it off to Larissa Poland, who brings it over the timeline, gets his, a screen from Haley. Haley puts up the layup and good. Haley Lubin with two, and it's now 13 to 11. Nice little up and under move. Haley goes to the line, puts up the traditional three point play. It's now 13 to 12. In the corner, dribbles out, shot from DeJager, no good. Rebound by Larissa Poland. I'm sorry, that shot was by Uten Bugard. Larissa Poland down low, Zubrod, no good. Rebound, fought for, and they're gonna call Zubrod with her third foul. Sammy picks up, I'm sorry, that's Sammy's second foul. So I missed, I missed a foul somewhere along the lines here. As Cleveringa will bring the ball up for the Tigers. Cleveringa hands it off to Uten Bugard. Uten Bugard passes left to Cleveringa. Near the top of the key, now into the corner. Gets it down low, puts up a layup, up and in. Nice move by Willow Postma. Postma now with six, and it's 15-12. Sitzman fouled as she crosses the timeline. That foul is going to be on Makaya DeJager. That's her first, team's second. And we'll see Bella Schrader come to the ball game. Out of necessity. Larissa Poland looking to get it in. Bounce pass in to Hodgson. Hodgson bringing it toward the hoop. Puts up a shot. No good. And we're going to have a blocking foul. That foul is going to be on Willow Postmo. That's going to be her second. That's going to be the team's third. And it will send Hodgson to the line to shoot two. Hodgson puts up the first, off the back iron, no good. And we will see Kristen Brummel come into the ball game. Hodgson getting ready to put up the second. Puts up the second, off the back iron, no good, rebound, fought for, put up, no good by Bella Schrader. Quickly ahead to Cleveringa. Cleveringa over the timeline. Stops, hands it off to Viz. Viz dribbles toward the baseline. Now looks to kick it out. Kicks it out to the top of the key. Dieger. Dieger left side of the paint. Puts up a shot. And we're going to have a blocking foul. And it's going to be on. Who's it going to be on? It's going to be on Hodgson. And that's going to be her second. Team second. Sorry about the early glitches there, friends. Appreciate you hanging with me as Makaya DeJager knocks down the first. It's 16-12, 6.31 left to go here in the second. A small student contingent showing up for Trinity. As the ball quickly ahead to Sitzman. Sitzman left side of the paint, puts up a floater, no good. Bella Schrader with the rebound and she is fouled in the act of shooting. Bella might be the spark that the Jays need overall. Foul was on Karen Newton Bugard. That's going to be her first. It's going to be the team's fourth as Bella puts up the first and knocks it down. Bella Schrader knocks down her first free throw. Appreciate Ag State for sponsoring tonight's scoreboard and Schuster Trucking for tonight's bottom line. And we're going to have a foul under the basket. It's going to go the other way. Foul is going to be on Larissa Poland. That's going to be Poland's first. It's going to be the team's third. Inbound pass to Cleveringo. Bring the ball up over the timeline. Now with the right hand. Dribbles right. Now back to the left. Hands it off to Uten Bugard. 
Bugard back to Cleveringa. Now corner three. Viz, sorry, long two, no good. Rebound fought for. And we're going to have a jump ball. It'll be Jay's ball off the jump, off the possession arrow. Larissa Poland passes it into Haley. Haley brings it up over the timeline, stops. Back to Hodgson. Hodgson playing a little four on five. Larissa Poland, wide open three, no good. Rebound by Hodgson, but her foot was on the line. It will be Tiger basketball. 16 13, 546 left to go here in the second. Appreciate you joining us wherever you might be here tonight. Again, a last minute home game for the Jays. Game itself was on the schedule, but because of some gym issues at Trinity, Jays agreed to host. DeJager gets it to Brummel. Top of the key, right. Rebound fought for, and the foul is gonna be on Willow Postma. That's gonna be her third if I've got it correct. Nope, it's not on Postma, that's gonna be on Kirsten Brummel. And that's gonna be her first. Team's fifth and sends Bella Schrader to the line to shoot two. Puts up the first, knocks it down. Not much arc to that free throw, but it fell anyway. Bella walks up to the free throw line again, puts it up off the back iron, no good, rebound going the other way. De Jaeger goes coast to coast, rims out, no good. Bella Schrader with a rebound ahead to Sitzman. Sitzman drives, left side of the paint, puts up a shot, errant shot, no good. Bella Schrader puts up, puts up the putback, no good, and we're gonna have a foul, and it's gonna be on Isaiah Sitzman. That'll be Sitzman's first, it'll be the team's fourth, with 5'11 left to go here in the second. 16-14, Tigers in the lead, and Alice Brummel will come into the ball game now for Karen Newton-Bugard. Cleveringa up over the timeline with a left hand, passes into the corner. Brummel, Viz, spins, puts up a jumper and knocks it down. Madeline Viz now with four. 18-14. Larissa Poland brings it up over the timeline. Poland looking, hands it off to Sitzman. Sitzman, middle of the paint, puts up a shot. Aaron, no good. They're going to say that ball was tipped. It'll be Jay's basketball still. Into Larissa. Puts up the three, no good. Rebound, fought for, come away with it, does to Jaeger. It's a three on one, breakaway, puts up a shot, no good from Alice Brummel. And we're gonna have a foul on the far end of the court from our broadcast position. Foul is gonna be on 10, Alice Brummel. That'll be her first. And the Jays are still in the bonus. It sends Haley Poland to the line to shoot two. Haley puts up the first, rims out, no good. Gets ready with the second, puts it up, knocks it down. Haley Poland with her first points of the ball game, and it's now 18-15 in favor of the Tigers. Cleveringa passes left to Brummel. Brummel bounces down low to Viz. Viz back out to Brummel. Brummel, three, no good. And the Tigers, as they try to come away with it, Dieger was on the baseline. 4.15 left to go in the second. Again, it's a three-point lead in favor of the Tigers. A couple of Tigers are going to sub in here. Long inbound to Sitzman, drives into the left side of the paint, and she is fouled. And she will go to the line to shoot two. Foul is going to be on Madeline Viz. That's going to be her second. And Sitzman will go to the line to shoot two. Sitzman 
Puts up the first, high arcing, rimming out, no good. And we'll see Kellen and Paulson come in as well as we're gonna have a whole bevy of subs. I think it's everybody but the shooter coming out. So Zubrod is in and Kellen is in and Sitzman is in and Hodgson and Paulson. Viz goes out and Micaiah DeJager comes in. Just some wholesale changes for both teams. Sitzman gets ready to put up the second. Puts it up and in. Or Isaiah Sitzman with her first point of the ball game and it comes on a free throw. It's 18-16, four minutes left to go in the first half. Jumper right of the free throw line, no good. Rebound by Hodgson. Ahead to Sitzman, Sitzman left side of the paint, bounce pass to Paulson, nice pass. Not able to convert and Paulson is gonna come up with the foul. Kennedy Paulson picks up her first. It's the fifth team foul, so we will see two shots now coming on the other end of the floor. Karen Newton Bugard will shoot the free throws. Again, Amy Jungers will be our between games guest. She is the development director for Galen Catholic as that first free throw from Karen Newton Bugard is no good. Hey, chocolate sales, let's talk about it. J Club and Fine Arts, it's split. This year, there is a new mega almond bar for $3. There is no longer a $1. Almond Bar. Karen Uten Bugard knocks that down. It's 1916. See your favorite Galen student for more details as Paulson loses control and it's going to be a charge by Paulson. She picks up her second. So preschool through 12th grade will have availability of the chocolate bars. They will not be on hand. It's a pre-order only. Credit goes to the family and not necessarily the individual student. There is no requirement for sales number. Dieger bounces left to Uten Bugard. Uten Bugard at the free throw line. Hands back to Dieger. Three. No good. Rebound. Fought for. And we're going to have it going the other way. It's been a whistle happy here. Second quarter. Foul is going to be on 20. That is Kirsten Brummel. That is her second. And Sitzman will come down to the right side of the floor to try two free throws. Sitzman gets ready, puts up the first off the front iron, no good. Jays took quite the bruising last time out. They were down to seven or eight varsity players as Isaiah knocks down the second. It's 19 to 17. They went to the, there are a bevy of students that went to the March for Life in DC. And our females and male student athletes were no exception as Paulson reaches into that one, knocks it out. Bugard puts up the shot, no good. And the foul is gonna be on Grace Kellen. That's gonna be Grace's second. It's going to be bonus time still for the Tigers. Uten Bugard will go to the line. Puts up the first, knocks it down. She has five. It's 20 to 17. See a trio of players coming onto the floor now between the two teams. Second free throw attempt is up, off the back iron, no good, rebound, fought for. They're gonna have a dual possession and it will remain Tiger basketball. I'll probably say it a couple of times tonight, but hello to Sherry Jo Wickup. Hope you're battling well up in Sioux Falls. Shot off the bank is good here from Akaya DeJager. It's 22 to 17. Ahead to Zubrod, bounce pass to Larissa Polin, stops at the free throw line, packs it out to Zubrod. Zubrod back out to, Pol or to uh, Polin, rather. Larissa Polin, one-on-one -on -one to Zubrod. And walk, she walked with a basketball.
If you're watching here tonight, Sherry Joe, hope you are doing well. I know there's a lot of folks thinking about you here tonight. Thought about you last night as eighth grade basketball kicked off their regular season in a win by 10 over Akron. Sitzman comes away with that one. 2.26 left to go here in the second. 22 to 17 is the lead for the Tigers. Sitzman, top of the key. Three off the back iron, no good. Rebound fought for. Zubrod kicks it back out to Sitzman. Could have pulled the trigger on another three. Instead, running layup, no good. Comes away with, come, came away with by Cleveringa. Cleveringa drives to the basket and puts it up and in. Cleveringa went coast to coast. She has six. It's 24 17, just under two minutes left in the first half. Sitzman. Cross court, Haley Poland over to Larissa Poland. Larissa down low, Zubrod puts up the shot off the knee. Samantha Zubrod with four. It's 24 to 19. Bounce pass. That one no good. Rebound by Hodgson. Ahead to Larissa Poland. Larissa brings it up the floor and fouled from behind by Kirsten Brummel. If that is on Brummel, that's her third. It is. And Larissa Pullen will go to the line to shoot two. Pullen puts up the first, rattles around and down. Larissa now with three. It's 24 to 20. One twenty-eight left to go in the first half. Pullen puts up the second, knocks it down. She has four, and the lead is trimmed down to three. Now it's six as Ava Klein knocked down that three. 27-21. Haley Lubin in the ballgame for the first time tonight. At least in varsity action. Larissa Poland with it now. Minute five left to go. Zubrod, bounce pass. Long two, no good off the front iron. Rebound by, by Uten Bugard. It's a two-on-one, Uten Bugard. Cross the lane, no good. Larissa Poland comes away with it. 49 seconds left to go here in the second. Larissa brought it up over the timeline, gets a screen from Haley as she stopped her dribble. Bounce pass to Zubrod. Zubrod comes away with it. Haley Lubin, deep three, in and out, no good. Zubrod comes away with it and is fouled from behind by Ava Klein. That's going to be Ava's second. As Sitzman will come into the ball game after the first free throw. Shot clock is off. As Zubrod gets ready to put up the first. Sammy put up the first off the front iron. No good. Second one, no good. Rebound by Cleveringo. 25 left in the first half. Into the corner. Not sure she thought about a three. As it's cross court to Brummel. Brummel to Cleveringa, top of the key. Guten Bugard drives right side of the paint, puts it up off the back iron, no good. Zubrod, gotta get it ahead quickly. Lubin to Zubrod. Zubrod puts up a shot that falls well short as we have hit halftime. It's 21 to 27 in favor of the Tigers. We'll be back after this. You're watching Jays and Tigers on Fuller Digital Solutions and FullerDigital.net. All the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. 
forget the ramps and hassles when hauling. They are built to tilt. Tilt bed trailers made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. We're excited to now offer one of the best tilt bed trailers on the market, ranging from 22 to 28 feet in length. And like everything we manufacture, these trailers are built to work, last, and make your life easier. All with confidence when you hook up to a tilt bed trailer made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. Visit us online today at HolsteinMFG.com. Brian, uh... Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling now joined by Coach Wilchin. And Coach, you guys kind of took one on the chin last night against a very good Western Christian Wolfpack ball team. <laughs> yeah, they were good. Uh, the first time I saw the coach up there, met him, shook his hand. I'm like, you guys aren't as tall as normal. He goes, no, we're, we're a little shorter team this year, Coach. But boy, can they run and can they shoot. So yeah. obviously you want to be tall to play basketball sometimes. Well, shoot, shooting sometimes is the name of the game, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And they, uh, I was just looking at the stats. They shot, I've never seen this before, uh, 43 pointers last night on us. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds something like you hear out of Grinnell College. You yeah. know, where all they do is put up threes and, yeah. and put up 150 a game. Yeah, well, you know, 25 threes is a lot for, you know, 1A basketball. That's usually a lot of threes. It's 25 to 28. But, yeah, 40 is unheard of for us. T a tough matchup against a uh, against a higher class school and, and how difficult is it to go up against an opponent that's a larger school larger class in the middle of your season uh yeah this was you know we committed this last summer and we wanted to play it you know with with the cancellation and the reschedule uh so we we stood behind our our efforts to, to play them uh but really it was just about getting our, our young guys experience against a good team getting used to that atmosphere uh, playing in a big gym, we re I really wanted to play them up there. Um, get used; to, they have a, a tournament type gym, uh, district final type gym. Um, it's really about experience, and that's all we were looking for last night. Looking for guys to go out and give the best efforts they could. Um, no one was an uphill battle. At what point do you? And I don't want to say pack it up, but at what point are you focusing then on just some development time? And when it be when it becomes such a big lead? Yeah, last night we. Uh, well, with the, with the C-Squad game and the uh, JV game, um, I played my top eight guys pretty much all game. And I told you guys, I said, I'm not pulling out. We have to work tonight. We have to work to get better. They set the standard. They're the gold standard of basketball. we got to get used to playing like this. If you know We're not going to match it one night, but get a taste of it so that way we can maybe put, play with that little bit of intensity. The, the boys kept saying last night, the game's so fast, Coach. The game's so fast. I'm like, that's the way it is in 2A. That's what happens when you play good teams. But... You know, 1A's got good teams too, Matt, and we're going to see those guys in tournament time. You guys have a challenging week, ahead, you know, with Western Christian yesterday, and, and tonight's game got moved from being up at Trinity to a, a quick turnaround of, uh, I, I think of it almost like the it, when uh, when the Metrodome collapsed and they had to open up the, uh, the Gopher Stadium, yeah. they had to open up TCF there for... On a, on a quick turnaround, almost the same type of deal where we kind of had to turn the key on and, yep. and kind of get going here tonight. What kind of advantage is, is it to, to play at home again instead of taking that bus ride up 45 minutes up the road? Yeah, uh, it's definitely an advantage for us playing our home gym. We obviously shoot better for the most part. Um, in the, the 12, 18 years I've been coaching, 12 years with Mike, Coach Lango, we typically have good games up there. They always give us a tussle at their gym. Yeah, that too is a different atmosphere, different type of gym with with the opening above above the bleachers and the tighter walls on each side, um, different it's just a different, it's a little darker gym. Um, but, you know, it's a good experience, too, to get those different gyms. But definitely we will, we're will. we hoping to play better here at home. What's it like playing a team for a second time? Regardless of where the game's being played, what's it like playing a team for the second time? Uh, as for coaches, we love it. Because then we get to see it's kind of a challenge to see which team has progressed the most. So, you know, I don't want to jinx ourselves. But, yeah, we're expecting to play well tonight. We'll have Gabe back tonight where we didn't have Gabe against him the first time we played him. Um, obviously, we don't have Carson this time, so plus one, minus one. We'll get Dylan Lubin back in the lineup tonight. We tested him out. So that was one nice thing about having Hall Western last night. Dylan got to play in the JV game and a little bit of the varsity to figure out that, that finger and how the, the playing with the uh, splint on, how, how that affected his game, and he played through it pretty well. Yeah, he mentioned to me that he had a ruptured tendon in there. I thought he had just jammed it pretty good, but... Yep. Evidently, with with Dr. Jiha and and, uh, and Bob Bob Augustine taking a look at it, obviously was something a little bit more. I appreciate you bringing that up because I do want to give a shout out to physical therapy and Bob Augustine. 
Um, he's been working overtime taking care of us this year, so kind of give, give him a shout-out uh, tonight. They, yeah, that uh, that whole medical team's worked really hard. And they, they've, they've been a great benefit for, for Galen Athletics, for sure. Yep. Now you guys take on this team, and, and of course, you guys get uh, not to look too far ahead, but Friday or uh, Saturday, you get a matinee, a rare matinee on, yep. a, on a Saturday against against a tough St. Mary's squad. Yeah, we're excited with that one. That's going to give us another tournament type atmosphere game going on a Saturday. Uh, you know, to get the tournaments, you get those Saturday games. Uh, yeah, it's going to have kind of a college feel. You know, the the Briarcliff morning side type game Saturday afternoon. So uh, that's going to be different, but exciting. Well, it'll be a different routine for us Saturday. Um, but we're hoping to play well against against Remsen. I thought we played, you know, decent at times, but we let the game slip away. Uh, you know, the pressure and maybe some of those things. So hopefully we're learning from those as, as we progress with all these games. Hopefully the, the last night Hall Western, you know, gave us a tint of that experience, and hopefully we keep building on that uh, and, and prove on the Remsen St. Mary's game. And Saturday will give you that tournament type of feel with the crowd. Yes, I ho- I'm hoping so. Well, I'm, I believe we play Friday too, don't we? I believe uh, you do also. But at Hinton, it is it is an away game. And, so. and they had a good win last night. Yeah, uh, they beat George Little Rock. So uh, it's going to be maybe not so much focus on Remsen, but we were focused on Hinton first. Well, I'm looking at the games that I'm calling. But <laughs> hey, good luck tonight. Appreciate you joining us, and we'll be back after this. You're watching Jays and Tigers on Fuller. AgriVision Equipment and Exact Emerge Planner Technology is here to help you maximize your yield and efficiency, along with a proven 8 bushel per acre yield advantage because of the pinpoint accuracy of seed depth and placement. You can cover 50 acres per hour without compromising your stand. We know the risk of planting outside the optimal planting window, so don't let the weather control your bottom line. When you partner with AgriVision Equipment, you get access to the best service and technology support in the area. And visit any one of our 15 locations today to learn more about our large selection of new and used planters. AgriVision Equipment, focused on your future. Reliance means being dependable. And when it comes to comfort in your home, you want Reliance from a place you can trust with a product you can count on. That's why Marcus Lumber stocks Reliance brand water heaters. Because with Reliance in the name, it's the brand you can trust. Marcus Lumber has been stocking and installing Reliance water heaters for decades. So choose the name you trust for your home. Choose Marcus Lumber and Reliance water heaters. Welcome back to the Deb Camo Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you tonight as we have two minutes before the second half starts, and I got a lot to say. Mattress fundraiser coming up for the Galen Band. All mattress sizes available, including custom. There's going to be 25 or more mattresses on display of all comfort levels. Brand new mattresses with 1 to 20 year warranties. Delivery and shipping is available. Cash, check, credit card, and financing is available. That's Sunday, March 3rd from 10 to 4 here in the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Check that out. Make sure you check out the world's finest chocolate kickoff. It, I believe it started tonight. Every student will receive an order form, but families can all sell together on one order form. Students will not have chocolate sent home with them to sell. Everything is pre-sale only. Order forms are due on the 12th, so make sure you reach out to your favorite student. If your favorite student does not reach out to you, you can reach out to chocolate sales at galencatholic.org. Uh, many of your favorite items are on there, so make sure you check that out. Catholic Schools Week is coming up. That will be January 29th through February 3rd. A lot of fun stuff coming up, but one of the, a couple of the bigger things happening is the Dads and Dining will be on Friday the 2nd. That's a fun event, one that I hope to be participating in this year, and that's also with a mass and a open first Friday adoration. On Thursday will be the family uh, annual family picnic. Uh, it'll be in the gyms as well as the um, Rosemary Deegan cafeteria and if you haven't had a chance to check that out they just got done with some more brickwork in there it looks awesome they uh ryan wilchin coach wilchin's guys did a great job with that so make sure you take a look at that of course check out our local sponsors schuster trucking as well as ag state ag state bringing you tonight's scoreboard and Schuster Trucking bringing you tonight's bottom line.
as we get ready for second half action here in the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Another thing coming up is the Galen Ball, a night in Nashville, Saturday, April 20th. Make sure you check out galencatholic.org for more details. And if you haven't checked out the brand new galencatholic.org, make sure you give that a look as Amy Jungers and her staff has done an amazing job in the development office getting that thing looking spiffy. Rysea Sitzman starts off this half with a layup and the Jays with a 27 to 23 deficit now. Cleveringa gets it in the corner to Dieger, or sorry, on the right wing. Dieger now passes to Viz. Viz dribbles near the paint out to Cleveringa, top of the key, 15 on the shot clock, right side of the paint. That one swiped out, comes away with Haley Poland. Haley Poland, left side of the paint, puts up a layup, no good. It was blocked by Uten Bugard, who comes away with it and comes the other way. Uten Bugard kicks it out, three, Dieger, no good, rebound, Cleveringa. Cleveringa falling, and that one's going to be falling on the baseline, and it will remain Tiger basketball. 53 seconds off the clock, and it's 27-23 in favor of the Tigers. Early third quarter. Quick inbound. Cleveringa, that one's no good. Missed everything, and we are going to have a held ball. It will be Tiger basketball off the jump. Uten Bugard will be the inbounder. Uten Bugard looking for somebody to get it into. Counts on, gets it into Viz. Viz, center of the paint, now right to Postma. Shot, no good, rebound by Larissa Poland. Larissa Poland brings it up the floor. Dribbles to the far side, now drives, baseline, kicks it out. Back out to Poland. Poland counts on to Haley Poland. Haley between the circles, 15 on the shot clock. Haley Poland, left side of the paint, puts up a shot, no good. And the foul is going to be on Madeline Viz. That's going to be her third. It's going to be the team's first of this second half. And it'll send Haley Poland to the line to shoot two. Haley puts up the first, knocks it down. Haley Poland with two points now, and it's 27 to 24. 6.30 left to go here in the third. Haley knocks it down. Banks open this late at night. I wonder if it's prime bank. 27-25 as Cleveringa will bring it up over the timeline with the left hand. Hand off to Uten Bugard. She's near the top of the key. Gets it to a cutting Viz. Now out. Dieger drives baseline right to Viz. Right side of the paint. Puts it up. No good. Put back. No good. Rebound, fought for, and Zubrod comes away with it. Bounce pass to Sitzman, almost stolen away by Dieger instead. Sitzman brings it up, left side of the paint, puts up a layup, and good. Isaiah Sitzman with six. It's 27-20, I'm sorry, it's 27-27. First time this game's been tied since the opening jump. Viz, right side of the paint. Gets it back down low from Cleveringa, puts it up. No good, rebound by Hodgson. Hodgson gets it ahead to Sitzman. Sitzman with the left hand, left side of the paint, kicks it right to Larissa Poland. That one blocked and comes away with it, does Willow Postma. Postma spins after half court to Viz. <laughs> and a double dribble by Dieger. 519 left to go here in this third quarter. It's 27 all. Poling gets it into Sitzman. Sitzman in the backcourt gets a screen from Hodgson. Sitzman bounce pass. Zubrod puts up the shot. Count the basket. And the foul. Samantha Zubrod will try for the traditional three-point play. It's 29-27. 512 left to go here in the third quarter. It is the third team foul by Postma. Free throw attempt is good by Zubrod, and Zubrod makes it the traditional three-point play. Ball swatted at, and I believe it's going to be a foul 
on Hodgson. Quickly inbound to Viz, who puts it up and in. Foul on the other end. And that's going to be on Newton Bugard. It's going to be the third team foul. Hodgson's going to go out of the ball game. Nice opening three minutes from Nevaeh. Larissa Polin slaps the ball, sets the offense in motion, bounce pass in. That shot by Haley Polin is blocked. And DeJager comes away with it. DeJager now backs up, kicks it left. Uten Bugard takes a free throw line jumper off the back iron, no good. Sitzman comes away with it. Ahead to Poland and a little too high for Poland. It's gonna go out of bounds. 4.32 left to go in the third. Jays with a one point lead, 30 to 29. Uten Bugard's gonna go out of the ball game. And in comes Klein, as well as Kirsten Brummel. DeJager brings it over the timeline with a right hand. Now moves left, and we're going to have an offensive foul, and I believe it's going to be on Viz. It is, and that's Madeline Viz's fourth personal. Inbound to Haley Poland, back to Larissa Poland. Larissa will bring it up the center of the court. Drives, and that ball was poked by Klein. That's going to be her third. Team's fifth, and it sends Poland to the line, and we've got a 30-second timeout. Back in 30, you're watching Florida Digital Solutions and FloridaDigital.net. Marcus Lumber's showroom offers you an experience like no other. So when you're thinking of replacing your windows, Marcus Lumber is sure to help add clarity for the decision best fit for your home. Featuring Thermotech Premium Windows, they will show you quality, energy-efficient options. Made in the upper Midwest, Thermotech knows a thing or two about the temperature extremes that we face. So expect more energy savings, more beauty, and more comfort with Marcus Lumber and Thermotech Windows. Welcome back to the Dead Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you. 4.14 left to go in the third. 30-29 to 29 is the lead for the Jays. Larissa Poland will be going to the line to shoot two. Remember to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. You know whenever we go live like we will this Friday, this Saturday afternoon, a matinee game. Tip time for the girls game is approximately 12.30. Boys game to follow. That first free throw is no good. Remember the Mission Honduras tailgate will be happening. Mission Honduras tailgate. It is, uh, it's uh, taverns, macaroni and cheese, chips and assorted dessert bars as the second free throw attempt is up and no good and Zubrod commits that foul and that's going to be her third team second free will offering for that delicious meal proceeds go to help fund the trip Dieger with it left side of the paint handed off to Uten Bugard Uten Bugard has it now three knocks it down Karen Uten Bugard, she now has eight. And it is 32 to 30. Sitzman passes left, Zubrod. Zubrod bounce pass to Poland. Poland top of the key, left side of the paint now, puts up the jumper, no good rebound by Postma. Postma looks to get it ahead, does, tipped by Sitzman out of bounds, and it will be Tiger basketball. Ball inbounded to Alice Brummel. Now down low. Kirsten Brummel back out to Alice. Three off the back iron. No good. Gets her own rebound. Puts up the layup. No good. Rebound by Schrader. 
Schrader gets it ahead to Sitzman. Sitzman directing a little bit of traffic. Puts up the left side of the paint. No good. Poland with the rebound. Put back and in. Larissa Poland has six. It's 32 to 32. 308 left to go in the third. Bounce pass. Floater. No good. Rebound by Schrader. Schrader has been coming up big. I'd be, I'd be willing or interested in seeing her rebounding stats as Larissa Poland picks up the offensive foul. That's her second, team's third, as Hodgson comes in for Zubrod. Thirty-two all, two fifty-two left to go in the third. Uten Bugard. Toward the near corner. Gets it in the paint. Spinning. Puts up a shot. No good. Rebound. Hodgson. Hodgson ahead to Sitzman. Sitzman casually brings it up over the timeline. Into the corner. Larissa Polin. Three. Good. Larissa Polin. She has nine. It's 35-32 in favor of the Jays. Uten Bugard with it now. Left side of the paint, spinning, gets it over right side of the paint. Kirsten Brummel, she knocks down a two. It's 35-34. Sitzman bringing it up for the Jays. Sitzman spotted a three for a second. Hodgson spinning in the paint. Shot no good. Uten Bugard with a rebound. Uten Bugard quickly ahead, and that pass too much to handle, and Hodgson traveled with the basketball as she picked it off for just a second. Haley Lubin and Samantha Zubrod will come back into the ball game. Haley Polin and Bella Schrader come out of the ball game. An impressive run there by Bella Schrader. A bunch of rebounds, able to get in the way of a lot of the passing lanes. Quickly in, three. Alice Brummel is good. Alice Brummel, 37-32. Sitzman brings it up over the timeline. 148, puts up a shot. That one partially blocked. Comes away with it, does Willa Postma. Postma will bring it up the floor herself. Postma stops, looks to get rid of it. Hand off, top of the key. Three, good! Makaya Dieger with six. It's 40 to 35, and Brandon Checker takes a timeout. Full timeout, back in 60. You're watching Fuller Digital Solutions. Since the 1980s, Colbeck Incorporated has been a family-run business providing their customers with quality wood and feed grinding services throughout Northwest Iowa. Colbeck Incorporated knows that your time is valuable and they pride themselves on getting the job done in a prompt and reliable fashion. Local cattle feeders have been relying on Colbeck Incorporated hay grinding for 30 years and Brian and Kevin are proud of their partnerships they've built with their customers. Whether it's grinding, mulch, or hauling, call Colbeck Incorporated today and see what they can do for you. AgriVision Equipment has you covered with a wide selection of John Deere tractors in the area. Our experts can help match you with the right equipment at the right price. Utilize one of our convenient pre-built packages or build and customize your own with our JD Buy Online site. Need financing? No problem. Apply online in five minutes or less. Our team is ready to find the package for you. Don't settle for less. Shop in-store or online at agrivisionequipment.com. Welcome back to the Dub Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you on the call as the Jays give up two quick threes to the Tigers and the Tigers regain the lead 40 to 35. 129 left to go here in the third. Grace Kellen bounce pass into Sitzman. Sitzman brings it up over the timeline with a left hand, dribbles right, dribbles further right, now toward the basket. That shot errant, no good. Kirsten Brummel comes away with it. Pass it ahead to Dieger. Brummel, three, good for Alice Brummel, and she now has six. It's 43 to 35. Sitzman kicks it over, Haley Lubin, Launches a three of her own, no good. Comes away with does Uten Bugard. Uten Bugard with a breakaway, puts up the layup, up and in. Uten Bugard with 10, it's 45 to 35 very quickly for the Tigers. Sitzman, bounce pass, Grace Kellen, puts up a three of her own, no good. Rebound, fought for, still being harassed. Was Postma as Dieger, bounce pass, to Kirsten, 
Kirsten in the paint, and that one's stolen away by Haley Lubin. Lubin ahead to Kellen, shot clock off. Kellen puts up a shot, and she draws the foul. Foul's going to be on Uten Bugard. That's going to be her third. Team is in the bonus already. So Grace will go to the line to shoot two. Puts up the first. No good. The Polans come into the ball game, as well as Jonah Brummel and Cleveringa. Second free throw attempt is up and rattles around and down for Grace Kellen. Kellen now has four. It's 36 to 45 in favor of the Tigers. 15 ticks left on the clock here in the third quarter. Top of the key, Alice Brummel gets it to Kirsten. Corner. Long jumper, knocks it down. Does Makaya De Jaeger right before the buzzer. She now has eight. It's 47 to 36. We'll be back with the conclusion of this ball game. You're watching Jays and Tigers on Fuller Digital Solutions and fullerdigital.net. All the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Forget the ramps and hassles when hauling. They are built to tilt. Tilt bed trailers made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. We're excited to now offer one of the best tilt bed trailers on the market, ranging from 22 to 28 feet in length. And like everything we manufacture, these trailers are built to work, last, and make your life easier. All with confidence when you hook up to a tilt bed trailer made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. Visit us online today at HolsteinMFG.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you on the call tonight. 47-36 quarter scoring. Tigers got the first 13-9, second 27-21, and the third 47-36. Won it by two, 14-12 in the second, and 20-15 in the third as that one's thrown out of bounds. It's going to remain, it's going to be Jays basketball. Ball inbounded, Hodgson quickly pulls the trigger. No good, rebound by Micaiah DeJager. DeJager comes up the near side and Grace Kellen bumps her and picks up the foul. That's gonna be her third. <laughs> Sitzman will come in for Kellen, 7.42 left to go here in the fourth. Ball inbounded to Jaeger near the top of the key, drives the lane, kicks it back out. Alice Brummel now back to Jaeger. Jaeger stops, gets it to the top of the key. Jonah Brummel to Cleveringa. Cleveringa, and we're going to have a held ball remain Tiger basketball. Nice job by Haley Poland getting her hands on that one. The three threes there by the Tigers, a real momentum killer for the Jays. Ball inbounded to Micaiah DeJager. DeJager near the top of the key gets a screen by Kirsten Brummel. Hodgson goes to the floor. Three point attempt is no good. Rebound by Larissa Poland. Larissa to Hodgson. It's going to be off of a Tiger. It's going to be off of Jonah Brummel. It'll be out of bounds and it will be Jays basketball. 7.05 left to go in the fourth. 47 36. Tigers still in control of this ball game. Sitzman passes over to Larissa Poland. Poland jumper, 10 foot in. Larissa, uh, Larissa Poland now with 11. Cleveringa to DeJager. DeJager near the free throw line, kicks it over to Cleveringa. 
Three-point attempt, no good from Dieger. And Dieger comes away with the basketball in the near corner, thought about a three, poked away by Zubrod. Dieger able to rally it in. Brummel gets it down low. Kirsten Brummel, now Alice. Dieger, jumper from 16, good. Makaya Dieger with 10. 49-38 in favor of the Tigers. Larissa Poland to Haley Poland. Haley puts up a three, no good. Rebound, fought for, still on the floor. Dieger comes away with it. Dieger drives, kicks it left side of the paint. Cleveringa able to wrangle it in. Dieger, right of the key. Alice Brummel gets it down low, poked up by Zubrod, and Zubrod picks up her fourth foul. It's the team's second, 5.40 left to go here in the fourth. 49-39 in favor of the Tigers. Viz comes back into the ball game. She has four team fouls. Zubrod has four. And Zubrod, I believe, just picked up her fifth. Zubrod picks up her fifth. She had seven points on the night. And Schrader will come in for her. To the line to shoot two. First one is up and in. I believe that's Kirsten Brummel. 50 to 38. Second free throw attempt, up off the front iron, rolls in from Kirsten Brummel. Haley Poland brings it up over the timeline, 51-38 in favor of the Tigers. Larissa Poland. Bounce pass, Hodgson puts it up off the glass and in. She has four. It's 51 to 40. 517 left to go here in the game. Uten Bugard with a little bit of a smile on her face. Gets it down low to Viz, stolen away by Sitzman. Sitzman coming hard the other way. And I believe Uten Bugard with the foul. Uten Bugard with the foul, it's her fourth. Paulson and Schmidt come into the ball game and we will have a full timeout back in 60 seconds on. Tiger Vision Equipment and Exact Emerge Planner Technology is here to help you maximize your yield and efficiency, along with a proven eight bushel per acre yield advantage because of the pinpoint accuracy of seed depth and placement. You can cover 50 acres per hour without compromising your stand. We know the risk of planting outside the optimal planting window, so don't let the weather control your bottom line. When you partner with AgriVision Equipment, you get access to the best service and technology support in the area. And visit any one of our 15 locations today to learn more about our large selection of new and used planters. AgriVision Equipment, focused on your future. Reliance means being dependable. And when it comes to comfort in your home, you want Reliance from a place you can trust with a product you can count on. That's why Marcus Lumber stocks Reliance brand water heaters. Because with Reliance in the name, it's the brand you can trust. Marcus Lumber has been stocking and installing Reliance water heaters for decades. So choose the name you trust for your home. Choose Marcus Lumber and Reliance water heaters. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here on the call. Jays trail this one 51 to 40. 506 left to go in the fourth. Zubrod has fouled out of the ball game for the Jays. As Larissa Polin bounce pass in, tried to get it to a cutting Paulson, instead picked off by Cleveringa. Cleveringa brings it up over the timeline, kicks it right to Dieger. Dieger. Stops at the free throw line to Uten Bugard. 
Wooten Bugard, handoff, Cleveringa. Cleveringa had a wide open lane, instead kicks it out to DeJager. DeJager, I think, had a chance at a three. Wooten Bugard with it now in the middle of the paint, and Sitzman with the foul. That's her second, team's fourth. And we're gonna have a 30 second timeout. Back in 30, you're watching Fuller. When it's time to choose a bank, the choice is easy. Prime Bank is the bank for you. With all the conveniences you want in a bank, including a mobile app and online account opening, Prime Bank also offers you pick checking with no monthly fees or minimum balances. And the best part is you get paid for everyday banking transactions. That's right, Prime Bank's you pick checking. We pay you for your everyday checking account transactions. Choose Prime Bank. It's the bank for you. Earn more your way with Prime Bank. Member FDIC. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you on the call tonight. Jays trail this one, 51-40, 4.42 left to go here in the fourth. Uten Bugard, the inbounder, gets it into Viz. Viz just in front of the free throw line and that rattles around the toilet bowl and down. Madeline Viz now with eight, 53 to 40. Schmidt holds on to it to Paulson. Paulson has the wide open Larissa Poland. That one's stolen away by Kirsten Brummel. Cleveringa brings it up the floor for the Tigers. Kicks it left to Uten Bugard. Uten Bugard. Down to Viz. Viz, 10 foot jumper, knocks it down. Madeline Viz with 10, 55 to 40. Marissa Poland. Rebound fought for, and we're gonna have a reach on Reach is on Larissa, that's her third. Bonus is in effect. And Kirsten Brummel will go to the line to shoot two. Kirsten puts up the first, knocks it down. She has five, it's 56 to 40. Second free throw attempt is up and good. For Brummel, Kirsten Brummel, it's 57 to 40. 344 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Again, Amy Jungers joins us in between the games. Cleveringa to Uten Bugard. Uten Bugard to Viz. Viz cross court to Cleveringa. Cleveringa gets it to the top of the key. Now Viz at the free throw line, drives right side of the paint, spins it back out. 14 on the shot clock, Cleveringa. Three, no good. And it's gonna go out of bounds. Sitzman. Brings it up, middle of the, drives the middle of the paint, no good, rebound, fought for on the floor, we're gonna have a held ball, it's gonna be Jay's basketball. 57-40, 2.58 left to go in the fourth. Sitzman, the inbounder, gets it into Paulson, Paulson. Dribbles, bounce pass out. Ball thrown away. Poland or Paulson tried to get it. It's gonna be Jay's basketball. Paulson the inbounder gets it into Sitzman, spots up a three, no good. Rebound fought for, comes away with it, does Willa Postma. 
Postma ahead. And the Tigers all smiles down on this end of the floor. 235 left to go in the ball game. Uten Bugard drives. Thought about getting it to Viz. Instead, Cleveringa near the top of the key. Hands it off to Uten Bugard. Stops. Back out to Cleveringa near the top. Eight on the shot clock. Underneath Postma. Good. Willow Postma with eight. It's 59 to 40. Sitzman will bring it up the floor for the Jays. Sitzman to Paulson. Paulson puts up a three. That one partially blocked. Cleveringa comes away with it. Cleveringa comes up the floor to Uten Bugard. Uten Bugard drives, stops, puts up a shot. No good. Sitzman comes away with it. 144 left to go in the ball game. And Sitzman is fouled. She's followed by Alice Brummel. That'll be Alice's second. Haley Poland will come into the or Haley Lubin rather will come to the ball game. Newton Bugard and Alice Brummel will go out of the game. Ball inbounded for a moment before it's tapped back out. Lubin inbounded to Schrader. Tried to get it to Paulson. Lubin took a dive in the corner. And Cleveringa able to come away with it. Klein, cross court. Dieger. Dieger backs out to Cleveringa. 17 on the shot clock. Cleveringa drives left side of the paint. Postma puts up the shot, doesn't count. A foul on Bella Schrader. That's her first bonus already in effect. Postma puts up the first, rattles around and out, no good. Schrader and Hodgson go out as well as, I believe, all of the starters for Trinity Christian. Trinity with a 19-point lead. And Postma makes it nine. 60-40, 63 ticks left. Paulson, top of the key. Ball fought for, Paulson comes away with it. Scheitler rattles around and down for three. A substitution timeout, 43 to 60. Brummel inbound. Paulson able to tie that up. It remains Tiger basketball with 35-4. Tigers able to get it in. Quick layup, no good. Rebound, fought for. Tigers put up the shot and Jays come over the rebound. Paulson near the top of the key. Shot clock turned off. Bounce pass. Paulson out to Scheitler. Three, no good. And a lot of bounds. Six seconds left to go. 60 to 43, the score. As time winds down and runs out on this game. Jays fall 60 to 43. We'll be back after this with our between game interview with development director Amy Junkers. 
back in just a short bit. You're watching Fuller Digital Solutions in fullerdigital.net. AgriVision Equipment and Exact Emerge Planner Technology is here to help you maximize your yield and efficiency, along with a proven 8 bushel per acre yield advantage because of the pinpoint accuracy of seed depth and placement. You can cover 50 acres per hour without compromising your stand. We know the risk of planting outside the optimal planting window, so don't let the weather control your bottom line. When you partner with AgriVision Equipment, you get access to the best service and technology support in the area. And visit any one of our 15 locations today to learn more about our large selection of new and used planters. AgriVision Equipment, focused on your future. Welcome to our halftime interview on Florida Digital Solutions. My name is Matt Schilling, joined by Development Director Amy Jungers. And Amy, we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up in the school. And one of those, it's not just necessarily a local thing, it's a national thing. It's Catholic Schools Week, uh, January 28th through February 3rd. You are correct. It's one of our favorite times of the school year. It's really important and exciting because all of the students get to be a part of it, all the way from our preschoolers to our seniors who have been through Catholic Schools Week for many years now. So they're seasoned, our seniors. So is it okay if we run through the schedule oh, yeah, of, course. of events? Okay, so like Mr. Schilling said, it is from January 28th to February 3rd. So we kick off our events on Monday morning. So that's Monday, January 29th. And that day we're celebrating faith parishes and vocations so really kicking it off with a bang right there at 8 35 um, once we greet all of our students for the day they will be heading down to the main gym the deb campbell memorial gym and we are going to have all school prayer the pledge of allegiance and then a living rosary which we're really excited to have again this year and the living rosary is really kind of it's a really neat event yeah. uh all the students have the ability to participate in it um the microphones are passed around for all the prayers and it, it's a really uh really nice in, in the uh uh, Alyssa does a nice job of setting the scene with the lighting and everything else. You're right. And it's really neat because we've been doing a few living rosaries since last year. It's kind of a new thing that we're starting up. And our littles are really being able to grasp the prayers better through this, I believe. I have a really little one here. She's in preschool and she's able to say her Hail Mary and Glory be. And I really believe it's because they're sitting in on these living rosaries and hear the prayers over and over again. So of course. it's been a great thing that's been added here. Um, also that day we'll be doing some seminarian outreach. One really special thing here about Galen is that we have two um, alumni who are seminarians for us right now for the Diocese of Sioux City. So um, being able to give them a couple shout outs throughout the week is really wonderful as we're really proud of them. And of course the vocational calling is a very important thing, especially within the Catholic Church. You're right. And it's a great day to just remind our students who may be discerning themselves that, you know, the priesthood and religious life may be for any of them. So a great day to remind them of that and a good way to kick off Catholic schools. What do we got coming up on Tuesday? Tuesday, we get to celebrate our wonderful faculty and staff. It's such a great day to just remind them how appreciated they are. You know, once you get into the month of January, stuff gets kind of gloomy and it's not as sunny and being able to really bring some um, sunshine to their day is important because we appreciate them so much. So what will happen for them that day is we will have treats and coffee in the morning to kick their day off right. And then we are having lunch provided by American Bank down at Richter Hall so those teachers won't have to eat in the lunchroom that day, even though that's a beautiful setting. They will get down to Richter Hall, get out of the building for a little bit and enjoy a um, delicious lunch. They will also get to wear comfy clothes. And I don't know if you all know how exciting that is for our teachers, but that is one thing that they really look forward to. So a great day to celebrate them. Um, if you have a teacher in your life or your student's life, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to them that day. Just a little email to them, uh, letting them know how appreciated they are. That goes a long ways. You don't have to be great with words. Just a big thank you shout out to them is all they really need to keep them going throughout the rest of the school year. And of course, our parents do a good job of supporting us during the uh, during that day to help let the faculty go and eat lunch. Yes, absolutely. It's great that we have all the parents support to make all these fun events happen throughout the week. Wednesday the 31st, what's going on? We are celebrating our communities and nation. And you know, we are really trying to beef up this day uh, for the Catholic Schools Week this year, finding different ways for people to feel more involved and in how they can reach out to the community for this day. So we're doing our annual Peter and Catherine Galen Society Luncheon. So this is a invite luncheon where people are invited to come in who maybe are considering or who have committed to remembering Galen in their estate planning and in their wills. Uh, it's a really a beautiful thing. It's a hard topic for people to talk about, but it's something that benefits the school not only today, but for generations to come. So these individuals who have committed to this or who are considering this commitment will come in for the day and we will provide them a luncheon and we do a beautiful little service 
chorus for them. And then our preschoolers or TK kiddos or our lower elementary kids will come and sing a song for them. So we try to make it special for them and just um, thank them for the consideration that they're making. A new thing that we're adding for Communities and Nations Day is a Then Feed Just One kickoff. So you know that's a really awesome event that we've done here year over year. Carolyn Bickford and Dick Sievert are so passionate about this and we thought this would be a great day to really kick it off for the students. So we will be bringing students down into the cafeteria throughout the day and Carolyn and Dick are going to do a special little presentation so the kids can really put a visual in front of them of what they'll be helping with for the then feed just one event that will come up in May so it's the student goal to raise $30 throughout the next few months for that event um, and we will explain and you know send materials home for the families as well but um, a good way for them to realize that they're helping the community over the next few months Thursday the first is always a very popular event uh, mm -hmm. taking place basically throughout our gyms and the beautiful cafeteria. Oh, it's one day that our parents love, we love, and the building just explodes with energy. I hope you all feel that when you come to celebrate um, at our annual family picnic. So get here early, find a parking spot, and make sure that you have a delicious lunch ready for your kiddos, and come join us in either our Deb Campbell Memorial Gym, the back gym, or our cafeteria. Have a special lunch with your kiddos, and it's just a really neat way to come together in one of the most favorite uh, days of of the whole week and then Friday we're gonna celebrate our students you know what we couldn't do what we do without the kids <laughs> so we have to celebrate them on Friday and I shouldn't say we have to we get to celebrate them on Friday so what we will do first and foremost is remember why we're here and we're all gonna to come together at our all-school mass so you parents grandparents um, any community members are invited to please come join us on Friday um, February 2nd and that's at 845 over at St. Joseph Catholic Church. It's also the first Friday of the month. So there will be adoration taking place throughout the day down at church. So we just ask that you start your day off right and end our week off on the right note to come join us for mass. And then after that, we will allow our students to have a fun day ahead. They will get a comfy day. They also love their comfy days and they'll get to play games, have treats throughout the day. And then one of the other very favorite things about Catholic Schools Week is the dads and dining. Have you ever done that, Mr. Schilling? I have not. It's it, it it's been I've either been ill or I've been working somewhere else. So this, this might be year. the year. <laughs> I've always volunteered, but it, it just never has uh, worked out for me. Well, hopefully this year. So this is for any dads who have TK through sixth grade students. We invite our dads into the lunchroom, and they do a lunchroom takeover. Don't worry. The cooking is still done by our staff, but the dad's going to go ahead and serve it to the kids. And I cannot tell you the amount of smiles and laughter that come out of the lunchroom that day. Your cheeks just hurt from seeing all the smiles. And um, we just thank all the dads. Like we have a wonderful turnout of dads who show up. So it's one of my favorite days too, to see all of that happening. And then Saturday, not to be overlooked, of course, is uh, part of our unification. Yes, absolutely. So it's a big day for our Spalding folks. And what will be happening is their Spalding Gala. And it's one of their last galas that will be taking place. So we're hoping for a wonderful turnout of that with that partnership. Um, we have been so blessed over the years to work alongside of them. And we know that they're putting on a really great event to celebrate all of the years that they have provided Catholic education um, for so many students who are in our building now. Um, and we hope to invite a lot of those families down here as well to continue that Catholic education. So um, shout out to Spalding Catholic in the many years that they have served our community. We're going to take a quick time out and we'll be back after this to talk more about what's going on at Galen. You're watching Jay's Basketball on Fuller Digital Solutions. Catholic in Lamars, Iowa instills respect and Christian values in a caring environment for students preschool through 12th grade. Teachers and staff go above and beyond to provide a high quality education and are dedicated to student success. We are a community striving to live God's word each day through academic service opportunities, athletics, and so much more. Galen Catholic School, in partnership with Spalding Catholic School, all are welcome to experience excellence in education and leadership through Christ. Sitzman Construction, Lamar's, general contractors you can trust with the job you need done, when you need it done. Call Jeremy at Sitzman Construction when you need a remodel or a complete build, and they work with EPS Buildings. Jeremy takes the time to know what you need. Past clients say he's reliable, honest, fair-minded, and reasonably priced. Contact Jeremy at Sitzman Construction. Jeremy and his crew will satisfy all of your construction needs. 712-540-2731. 
Welcome back, and Matt Schilling, and again, joined by Amy Jungers. And Amy, we've got enrollment coming up here. That's right. So right now, we're really focusing our enrollment for preschool, transitional kindergarten, and kindergarten. We always kick those enrollment times off way early in the year, um, specifically for our new families out there in the community who are considering Galen. So one thing that some people may not know about that you can help spread the word is that sign up is now open and there are seats limited so we have a lot of names on our list which is super exciting we want to keep adding to that but make sure that if you have a family member who's been considering make sure they're calling into the office so we can add them as well um is there an age limit on there yes thank you for asking so for preschool we actually have three options which a lot of people don't know that we have an option from 8 30 to 11 which is completely free to the family that's funded by the state then there's the second option that's 8 30 to 11 30 and that last half hour from 11 to 11 30 is a faith component for the kiddos if they'd like to stay for that there's a small fee added for that and then our students are welcome to stay for option three which is the full day preschool program the half of the afternoon section that is considered extended daycare you asked about ages i almost forgot so for preschool they have to be four by september 15th okay if your child is five by september 15th then there's two options for them they could consider the transitional kindergarten program or the kindergarten program um, a lot of people ask what is transitional kindergarten do you know mr Schilling? i believe it's help with development during that that age gap where they you, might not be able to hit all the achievements that are necessary. You are correct. So some of our kids turn a really young five, you know, and they may not quite be ready for that kindergarten level. And that transitional kindergarten time gives them one more year of just kind of being a kid. When kiddos get to kindergarten, there's a lot of academic rigor already, which is hard to believe. But man, those kindergartners work very hard already. So that TK time is just another building block year and it's a wonderful option to have here. So those are definitely limited seats. So if you're considering that TK option, make sure you're giving us a call. And as well for kindergarten, again, age five by September 15th. And also that list is open as well. You can check out our website, galencatholic.org. You're able to fill out a Google form easily to get your name on the list. And then we will be able to see you at our upcoming Junior J Jamborees. So if you're on our list for those programs, March 7 is our Transitional Kindergarten and Kindergarten Junior J Jamboree. And March 21st is the preschool one, both at 530. And if you guys haven't checked out the new GalenCatholic.org, Amy and her assistant Maggie did a phenomenal job redoing the brand new galencatholic.org it looks phenomenal yeah it's been much needed facelift and we're so excited that um it's hopefully a lot easier for people to use and navigate and we're very thankful that we were able to get that transitioned over for everyone and finally not a lot of details are yet finalized there's right. still a lot in the works but as always, the Galen Catholic Ball is coming up, and it's going to be on April 20th this year. You're correct. It's the most wonderful time of the year when it comes to Galen Ball time, and we're really excited to work alongside our general chairs, Amanda and Ross Small, and Tanya and Ryan Laban. They've been wonderful. They're ready to prepare you for a night in Nashville. So get ready to go and get your cowboy boots ready, and we will be sending out a lot of communication in the next few months and get ready for a fun time. And, of course, there's always there's so, the program is always great, but there are always so many great one-of-a-kind auction items up for grabs yeah. on a yearly basis mm -hmm. like the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Correct. That will be coming back and there's a lot of other ones. One that's going out this week is the parking spot for Catholic Schools Week for the family picnic. We had a family purchase that auction item and we will be coning off a front row spot at Catholic Schools Week and you're going to see why that spot is so valuable. So maybe <laughs> you will be bidding on that this year. So we're looking forward to that. It's always a great time. Entertainment will be provided. The food is always great. You guys do such a great job with it. Thank you. We hope you all see, we see you all there and it'll be a wonderful time. We'll be back with Boys Varsity Action after this. You're watching Jay's Basketball on Fuller Digital Solutions. Whether you are combining, hauling grain, or heating your home, fuel powers the fall. When it comes to energy, you need a company who is trustworthy, understands your needs, and who delivers to you. A company who is local, reliable, and affordable. That company is Ag State. Ag State Energy is clean, comfortable, convenient while staying competitively priced for our customers. Give Laura Sanguin or Seth Duff a call for all your energy needs.
Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial. Jim, Matt Schilling here with you as the Jays prepare to take on the uh, Tigers of Trinity Christian. We are still in our in-between in game time as both teams are warming up. We have about two and a half minutes before game time. The Jays come in to this ball game. They, as you heard from Coach Wilchin, they fell in a kind of a big way last night to Western Christian. It was 68 to 28. They come into the ball game with a record of six and eight. Trinity Christian comes in with a record of five and nine. So some similar traits between these two teams and the Jays will definitely have all their hands full, especially with Dustin Hawksbergen. Gabe Wilchin is averaging 13.1 points per game, while Hawksbergen is averaging 19.4. And that'll be, like I said, it'll be interesting to see if the Jays are able to keep him contained. We will take a one minute break and be back after this. You're watching Jays and Tigers on Fuller Digital Solutions and FullerDigital.net. All the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Forget the ramps and hassles when hauling. They are built to tilt. Tilt bed trailers made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. We're excited to now offer one of the best tilt bed trailers on the market, ranging from 22 to 28 feet in length. And like everything we manufacture, these trailers are built to work, last, and make your life easier. All with confidence when you hook up to a tilt bed trailer made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. Visit us online today at HolsteinMFG.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you as we prepare to send it down to the scorer's table and tonight's starting lineups. Good evening once again. Welcome to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym here at Galen Catholic for our second game in tonight's boy-girl varsity doubleheader. Let's extend another special welcome to our guests, the Tigers from Trinity Christian. <clears throat> Galen Catholic schools encourage positive sportsmanship and behavior at the game tonight by practicing good sportsmanship you will help make tonight's game one to remember. Let's give a hand to our officials for tonight's game. Brad Van Rokel, Joel Cranbrink, and Kurt Strauth. <laughs> now let's welcome the coaches. The Tigers are coached by Zach Van Ginkel, assisted by Toby Bogard. The Jays are coached by Ryan Wilchin, assisted by Eric Kellen and Alec Langle. And now for the starters, for the Tigers, a senior, number two, Pierce Gronaway. For the Jays, a senior, number two, Trevor Teal. For the Tigers, a junior, number 10, Corey Mason. For the Jays, a sophomore, number four, Dylan Lubin. For the Tigers, a junior, number 12, Carter Westra. For the Jays, a senior, number 10, Jackson Kramer. For the Tigers, a senior, number 24, Dustin Hawksbergen. For the Jays, a senior, number 12, Landon Ryder. 
For the Tigers, a sophomore, number 32, Luke DeYoung. For the Jays, a senior, number 30, Gabe Wilchin. Whether you are combining, hauling grain, or heating your home, fuel powers the fall. When it comes to energy, you need a company who is trustworthy, understands your needs, and who delivers to you. A company who is local, reliable, and affordable. That company is Ag State. Ag State Energy is clean, comfortable, convenient, while staying competitively priced for our customers. Give Laura Sanguin or Seth Duff a call for all your energy needs. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you as opening tip is controlled by the Tigers. Quickly up and in is Hawksbergen. He has a quick two, averaging 19.1 points per ball game. That one's tipped away. Kramer able to come up with it. Now Ryder being harassed in the backcourt. And we are going to have a 10 second call. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Ag State. Schuster Trucking brings you tonight's bottom line as Groningwig brings it into the front court. A quick 2-0 lead by the Tigers. Groningwig with it near the logo. Tries to get a bounce pass. Instead, it gets it in the air to DeYoung over to Ma uh, Mason. Handoff to Hawksbergen. Hawksbergen on that far side near the top of the key. Near corner with it now. Groningwig. Groningwig, sorry. Hawksbergen, two, one, three point attempt, no good. And we have a shot clock violation. 7.06 left to go in the first. Tigers with a two nothing lead. Kramer gets it into Lubin. Lubin, of course, ruptured those, the tendons in that finger. Quickly ahead to Ryder. Ryder in the front court, gets it to Wilchin. Wilchin puts it up, no good. Rebound by Hawksbergen. Hawksbergen quickly up the court for the Tigers. Right side of the paint, puts it up off the glass and in. Dustin Hawksbergen with four, and it's four nothing in favor of the Tigers. Tigers with a full court press, and Landon Ryder commits the offensive foul. First foul for Ryder, first foul for the team, and it is a turnover for the Jays. Groninwig brings it over the timeline. Dribbles right near the logo. Had a cutter. Being harassed. Now it's DeYoung and Westra. Westra on the near side. Westra tried to get it down low to Hawksburg and instead Kramer came away, uh, came away with it. In the corner, bounce pass down low. Put up the shot from Wilchin. It was blocked, he gets his own rebound. Fed Teal in the corner for three. Knocks it down. It's 4-3 in favor of the Tigers. 6.02 left to go in the first. Hawksbergen near the center circle. Hawksbergen drives right. Guarded by all well, three different Jays. And we're gonna have a foul, I believe it's gonna be on Trevor Teal. It is, it's his first, team second. 5.51 left to go in the first. This game, a rescheduled game, location-wise anyway. It was supposed to take place on this evening as Hawksbergen spins, puts up a jumper, no good. Ryder comes over with the basketball, kicks it over Trevor Teal to Wilchin. Wilchin, a little surprised to get that, and Pierce Groninwig comes away with that. Groninwig, and Groninwig lowered the shoulder and lowered the boom on Ryder as he commits the foul. Groninwig picks up his first, team's first, 5.32 left to go in the first. 4-3 is the score in favor of the Tigers. Kramer, the inbounder, gets it into Wilchin. Wilchin dribbles it over the timeline, pass it to Ryder. Ryder near the near logo. Lubin to Trevor Teal, down low. Wilchin triple teamed out to Ryder. Three, in and out, no good. Rebound fought for. Hawksbergen comes away with it. Hawksbergen will bring up the court for the Tigers. 
5-10 left to go to in the first, and Jackson Kramer commits the foul on the floor. They're going to say no shot. So that's going to be Kramer's first, team's third, and we're going to have Nolan Teal quickly into the ball game. Happy birthday to my wife at home watching as she turns a, another year older. Hope you're enjoying your day. As Gronenwig gets it into Hawksbergen. Hawksbergen, right side of the paint, swallowed up by a couple of Jays, and the Jays able to come away with it. It's a two on one, quickly a three on two. Nolan Teal puts it up off the backboard and in. Nolan Teal with his first two points of the game. It is 5 4 in favor of the Jays. As a platoon of Tigers gets ready to enter the ball, the ball game. The Young passed it off to Westra. Westra to Hawksbergen. Hawksbergen in the middle of the lane, puts up a jumper and knocks it down. Hawksbergen has six, all six of the Tigers' points. It's 5-6 in favor of the Tigers. Lubin thought he was going to be able to bounce pass it through. Instead, Westra comes away with it. <laughs> I don't know how that one fell. It's almost like some stick em on the ball. Knocked that ball down into the hoop. Lubin bounced pass, tried to get it to Wilchin. It was stolen away for just a second by DeYoung, and this Tiger defense is really something else here tonight, almost suffocating the Jays. Sparse crowd tonight, of course, with a relocation. A nice turnout by Trinity, making the 40 or so minute trip down Highway 75 as Nolan Teal gets it to 34. Langle back to Teal. Three-point attempt is good from Dylan Lubin. Looks like his shot isn't too affected by the splint on that finger. As Reed Gronenwig brought it up. Boogard. Three-point attempt, no good. Rebound by Nolan Teal, that three by Evan DeYoung. Nolan Teal to Dane Lehman. Dane with it again. Hello to his mom watching in South Dakota as Nolan Teal puts up the three, no good. Rebound by James Postma. Postma hands it off to Hawksbergen. Hawksbergen will slowly bring it up over the timeline. It's an eight, eight ball game, 3-11 left to go in the first. Bounce into the corner, Mason. Now top of the key, Hawksbergen passes left to Evan DeYoung. DeYoung loses control of it and Lubin comes away with it. Lubin left to Teal, Teal puts it up and Teal commits the offensive foul. Nolan Teal picks up his third, it's the fourth team foul with 2.53 left to go in the first. Wilchin and Ryder come in for Trevor Teal and Dylan Lubin. Reed Gronwig brings it up the floor for the Tigers. Passes right to Postma. James Postma to Evan DeYoung. DeYoung back to Gronwig. Evan Gronwig into the corner. DeYoung. Ball being moved around nicely. Hawksbergen gets it down low and Lehman commits the foul. And that's the fifth team foul by the Jays here in the first. 2.32 left to go in the first. It'll send James Postma to the line to shoot two. First free throw attempt from James Postma, rattles around and down. Picks up his first and it's 9-8 in favor of the Tigers. Second free throw attempt is up off the side iron, no good, rebound by Wilchin. Wilchin to Ryder, Ryder brings it up over the timeline, kicks it to Nolan Teal, Nolan thought about a three, Ryder out to Wilchin, Wilchin squares up, three, rattles around and out, no good. James Postma comes away with it, and Nolan Teal picks up his second foul here in the first quarter. 9-8 left to go in the first, 2-18, and Jackson Kramer's gonna come into the ball game after the first free throw by James Postma. Postma puts up the first, no good. Nolan Teal's gonna hit the bench. Yeah. 
Second free throw attempt from Postma is up. Off the side iron, no good, and we're going to have a foul on Trey Bugard. That's going to be his first, team second. As Kramer will inbound the basketball or attempt to, Lehman back to Kramer. Kramer passes left to Wilchin, stops in front of the free throw line, no good. Rebound is on the floor and picked up by Hawksbergen. Hawksbergen brings it up over the timeline. Two minutes left to go in the first. Hawksbergen with it now. Reed Groenwig. A lot of ball movement with 10 on the shot clock. Postma. Hawksbergen. Fadeaway jumper. No good. Rebound by Lehman. Lehman with that brace on the right knee. Brings it up the floor. Kicks it left. Landon Ryder puts up the three. No good. Rebound by 34 Langle. Out to Lehman. 34 Langle for three. No good. Rebound Lehman. So two quick rebounds by Lehman. Out to Langle. Ryder in to Wilchin. Wilchin fadeaway jumper from 14. Good. Wilchin now on the scoreboard. He has two. It's 10-9 in favor of the Jays. Just over one minute left to go in the first quarter. It's going to be off of a J out of bounds. Will remain Tiger basketball. Four Tigers come in. Four Tigers go out. One J in and out. Back to starting lineups for the Tiger. Pierce Gronwig looking to get the ball inbounded. Gets it in to Westra. Westra spins. Harassed by a couple of Jays. It's going to be out of bounds on Trevor Teal as he was laying out of bounds and touched the basketball. 50.6 left. 10-9 the score. Gronwig. Gets it to Hawksbergen, left side of the paint. Now he's in the middle of the paint, puts it up and in, does Dustin Hawksbergen. He's got eight. It's 11-10 in favor of the Tigers. Wilchin over to Kramer. Kramer ahead to Trevor Teal. Trevor tried to get it across court to Ryder. Instead, Hawksbergen comes away with it, and I think the Tigers would be happy to come away with at least a one-point lead, if not a three- or four-point lead at the end of the first. Carter Westra holding on to the ball. Carter stops, holding on to the dribble. Tried to get it away. Trevor Teal with 10. Trevor to Ryder. Ryder is going to be off of off of Westra and it'll be Jay's basketball. It'll be almost a corner inbound for Kramer with 7.7 left to go here in the first. Kramer looking to get it in, gets it into Wilchin. Trevor Teal with it now, three, two, one. Ryder, three, no good. And the Jays trail this one after one, 11 to 10. We'll be back in 60 seconds with the second quarter. You're watching Jays and Tigers on Fuller Digital Solutions and fullerdigital.net. Staying healthy means enjoying life's best moments. And the best way to stay healthy is to make your routine appointments. Whether you have new symptoms or it's time for your annual exam, the providers at Floyd Valley Healthcare know and listen to you. So you'll get the care that you need. We help you stay healthy by providing preventative care, finding health concerns early, managing chronic conditions, and connecting you with specialty care close to home. Don't miss a single special moment. Make your appointment today. When it's time to choose a bank, the choice is easy. Prime Bank is the bank for you. With all the conveniences you want in a bank, including a mobile app and online account opening, Prime Bank also offers you pick checking with no monthly fees or minimum balances. And the best part is you get paid for everyday banking transactions. That's right. Prime Bank's you pick checking. We pay you for your everyday checking account transactions. Choose Prime Bank. It's the bank for you. Earn more your way with Prime Bank. Member FDIC. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you tonight. I'd be remiss if I did not remind you the next time we are on the air will be Saturday. Tip time will be approximately 12.30 as the girls and boys both take on Rums and St. Mary. Girls with the first billing. 
as Lubin puts up a floater, count the basket, and the foul for Dylan Lubin. He now has five. It is 12 to 11 in favor of the Jays. Lubin will try to get the traditional three point play. Ag State brings you tonight's scoreboard, and Schuster Trucking brings you to tonight's bottom line as Lubin knocks that one down. Lubin now with six, it's 13 to 11. Luke DeYoung with it now, dribbles middle of the lane, puts it up, no good. Wilchin comes down with it, and somebody's playing without a shoe. It happens to be Trevor Teal. The Jays are playing five, four on five as Wilchin puts up a three, and no problem for Wilchin. Wilchin now has five. And the Jays lead this 16 to 11. Westra with it now. Westra left side of the paint. Spinning, spinning, harassed by two Jays. Still spinning and a five second call and a turnover on the Tigers. A sparse crowd here at the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Inbound to Wilchin. Wilchin gets it up over the timeline. Wilchin stops in the paint. Kramer, now Trevor Teal. Trevor. Gets it to Wilchin. Wilchin spinning, 10-footer, rattles around and down. Gabe now with seven, it's 18 to 11. That one from Hawksbergen. He just spun around fadeaway jumper on that one. He's got 10 of the 13 points. And Trevor Teal puts it up and in for the Jays. He's got five, it's 20 to 13. I'd be remiss if I did not, again, say hello to Sherry Jo Whitcup and her family if they are watching tonight. Hope you guys are doing well. We're all thinking about you here at Galen as Hawksburg <laughs> knocks another one down. I don't know how he did it with all the hands in his face, but he did, it's 18-15. Kramer to Wilchin, ahead to Lubin. Lubin into the corner, Trevor Teal. Trevor gets it back out to Lubin. Lubin was going to bounce pass it. Ryder, now Trevor Teal on the far side in the far corner, dribbles out of the corner. Now out to Lubin, 18 on the shot clock. Lubin drives in the paint, puts it up off the back iron, and Lubin able to knock that one down. He's got nine, an impressive showing for Dylan Lubin tonight. 22 to 15 the score, 543 left to go in the second. Pierce Gronenwig with it now. Gronenwig drives toward the baseline, Turns, spins, spinning again. Bounce pass to Hawksbergen. Hawksbergen knocks that one down. Hawksbergen with 14. And the Jays call a 30-second timeout. We'll take it with them. Back in 30, you're watching Jays and Tigers on Flow Digital Solutions. Sitzman Construction, Lamar's, general contractors you can trust with the job you need done, when you need it done. Call Jeremy at Sitzman Construction when you need a remodel or a complete build, and they work with EPS Buildings. Jeremy takes the time to know what you need. Past clients say he's reliable, honest, fair-minded, and reasonably priced. Contact Jeremy at Sitzman Construction. Jeremy and his crew will satisfy all of your construction needs. 712-540-2731. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you tonight. Appreciate you joining us wherever you might be. Couldn't do it without the fantastic local sponsors bring you the action each and every week. Lubin receives the inbound from Nolan Teal. Quickly ahead, Trevor Teal. A little too high for Trevor. Trevor can't jump that high, not quite as high as Nolan. Hawksbergen will bring it up the court. And we've got a clock issue, I believe. I think that's what it was. They're going to reset the shot clock to 30 as Evan DeYoung will be the inbounder.
Now that that's all situated, Hawksbergen receives the inbound. Hawksbergen with a right hand. Backs up, tries to get it down low. Now top of the key. Out to, oh, I don't have a jersey four on my roster. Shot put up, no good. Rebound fought for, and we're gonna have a foul. Nope, we're gonna have a jump ball. And it will be Jay's basketball. Fade away, Hawksbergen, no good. Rebound by the Jays. Lubin with it now. Bounce pass to Wilchin. 34 Langle, no good. Tries to get it out to Lubin. Still trying to get a jersey number four. Is that layup is up and good for Trey Bugard. Lubin over to Wilchin. Wilchin to Nolan Teal. Nolan out to Trevor Teal. Ball being swung around. Lubin spins. 14 on the shot clock. Nolan Teal corner. Gabe Wilchin three. No good. Rebound fought for. It's going to be off of Trevor Teal and out of bounds. And we are going to have a timeout. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. We'll be back in 30 on Fuller. Since the 1980s, Colbeck Incorporated has been a family-run business providing their customers with quality wood and feed grinding services throughout Northwest Iowa. Colbeck Incorporated knows that your time is valuable, and they pride themselves on getting the job done in a prompt and reliable fashion. Local cattle feeders have been relying on Colbeck Incorporated hay grinding for 30 years, and Brian and Kevin are proud of their partnerships they've built with their customers. Whether it's grinding, mulch, or hauling, call Colbeck Incorporated today and see what they can do for you. Welcome back to the Dub Cam Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling with you in jersey number four for the Trinity Christian Tigers is Bryce Uten Bugard. Hawksbergen with it now. He has 14 and he averages 19-1 per game, so he is well above his average on the season. Hawksbergen. Bounce pass Postma. With it now is Evan DeYoung and stolen away by Ryder. Ryder trying to go coast to coast, puts it up and in. Landon Ryder with his first two points of the ball game is 22 to 19. 22 19, 317 left to go in the first half. Coach Van Ginkle playing his entire bench here tonight as we get a reach foul by 34, Aiden Langle. Of course, the Jays with two Aiden Langles, 24 and 34, a year apart in school, also spelled differently. Westra with it now. Swung around. Groenwig, Groenwig out to DeYoung, and we're gonna have a foul. I think it's gonna be on Trevor Teal. Oh, they're gonna call that on Nolan. Nolan Teal picks up his third foul. Team second of the quarter, and 34 Langle comes back into the ball game for Nolan Teal. 24-19 the score, 251 left to go here in the first half. Coach Shucker will join us, and I think he'll join us pretty quickly because there is no dance team tonight. Westra with it now, at least I don't think, anyway. Hawksbergen, three, no good, but Landon Ryder committed the foul, so Hawksbergen will go to the line to shoot three free throws. 
Strider second. Hawksbergen with 14, and he averages 19-1 per game. Puts up the first of three. That one toilet bowls down. Now with 15. 24-20. Puts up the second. Knocks it down. And puts up the third and knocks it down. He has 17 of his 19, and that's going to be a problem for the Jays as Trevor Teal puts up the three, no good. Rebound by Wilchin, and Luke DeYoung picks up the foul. That's his first, team second. His 34 rider gets it in to Wilchin. Wilchin to Lehman, out to Ryder. Three, good. Landon Ryder. Five points for Ryder. It's 27 to 22. 213 left. Westra into the corner. Gronwig. Gronwig and Lehman commits the foul. Lehman picks up his second. Team's fourth, and Gronwig will be the inbounder. Gronwig looking for help, gets it into Westra. Westra, long two, no good, rebound, Wilchin. Wilchin double teamed, and looks like the way that he pulled up is that Westra picked up the foul. That's going to be Carter Westra's first, team's third and Lehman will be the inbounder. Wilchin will bring the ball up the floor for the Jays to Trevor Teal. Trevor out to Ryder. Ryder, free throw line jumper, misses everything. Lehman tried to save it for just a second, no good. 34 Langle will go out and Lubin will come back into the ball game. Pierce Gronwig will bring the ball up the court. 27, 22, 140 left to go in the first half. Gronwig gets it down to Hawksburg and Westra. Backdoor, good. Beautiful set there for the Tigers. 27, 24, Lehman off of Hawksburg and Lehman gets it, puts it up and in. Dane Lehman with his first two points of the ball game. It's 29-24 as Hawksbergen jumper on the other end knocks it down. And Hawksbergen already has his average just here in the first half. Lehman brings it up over the timeline. Ryder with it near the boundary. The gym just went silent and the action still goes on. Ryder bounce pass to Lehman. Trevor Teal on the baseline, loses it into the hands of Westra. 50 seconds left to go, and it's a three-point ball game. Nay, it's a one-point ball game as Corey Mason puts that one up. He has his first two points of the ball game. 29-28, Wilchin, right side of the paint, puts it up off a of glass, no good. Rebound by Gronwig, and the Tigers try to jump out to their first lead of the ball game since it was 4-0. I'm sorry, it was 4-3, but they had a four-point lead at one point in the ballgame. Hawksbergen holding it. About a second, second-and-a-half shot clock to game clock. Westra with it now. Westra in between the circles. Westra with nine. Hands it off to Hawksbergen. Hawksbergen with five. Hawksbergen gets in the corner. Gronwig, two-pointer. No good, and the Jays lead this one after one, 29 to 28. We'll be back in 60 seconds. You're watching Jays and Tigers on Fuller Digital Solutions and FullerDigital.net. Catholic in Lamars, Iowa, instills respect and Christian values in a caring environment for students preschool through 12th grade. Teachers and staff go above and beyond to provide a high quality education and are dedicated to student success. We are a community striving to live God's word each day through academics, service opportunities, athletics, and so much more. Galen Catholic School, in partnership with Spalding Catholic School, all are welcome to experience excellence in education and leadership through Christ. 
Sitzman Construction, Lamar's, general contractors you can trust with the job you need done, when you need it done. Call Jeremy at Sitzman Construction when you need a remodel or a complete build, and they work with EPS Buildings. Jeremy takes the time to know what you need. Past clients say he's reliable, honest, fair-minded, and reasonably priced. Contact Jeremy at Sitzman Construction. Jeremy and his crew will satisfy all of your construction needs. 712-540-2731. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling and I am joined by Coach Brandon Shecker. And Coach, it was a tough fourth quarter, but you guys were right in it in the first three quarters of the ball game tonight. Yeah, uh, you know, in fact, uh, we got down there in the third quarter. We started off third quarter coming back very well. I thought it went, I thought that uh, third quarter start looked pretty good. Um, Problem was, you know, and actually we we actually started taking the lead. Things were looking pretty good. And then, uh, and then we blinked, and then we were down by ten. Well, they hit. I think they hit three threes right in a row, and, and kind of took all the the wind out of the sails for the, they did. For the Jays tonight. I, it, it seemed like it took us uh, quite a bit of energy to get that comeback, and then uh, and then all of a sudden we kind of let loose on defense and let them let them have their way. So, I will say that I was thoroughly impressed tonight, and I I made several remarks about it. But Bella Schrader played a lot of minutes tonight. But the amount of rebound, she, she had two points on the night, both of them free throws. But the amount of rebound she had, if I would have kept track, I've got to imagine she was close to double digits in rebounds tonight. She was actually one shy. She ended up with nine. Uh, uh, our unofficial results right now, she ended up with nine. She actually had a third of our team's rebounds. You know, she did well. Uh, we've seen her continuing to put some extra effort and, and making some changes and adjustments to play better. and. Uh, she's been proving that in JV games, and so we're giving her more varsity minutes, and sh- those varsity minutes are going to continue based on how she continues to perform. It's she's a she, she's a bright light right now for us, and she's still somewhat of a raw talent too. Absolutely, and that's those are some of the things that we've been working with her on and, and talking to her about, and those are the things that she's putting ex- in the extra effort. And, uh, because of that little extra effort, it's showing up on you know on game nights. Have you so. seen the confidence boost just a little bit off of oh, that? Hundred uh, percent. She is completely different than even the start of the season. Um, you know, I even started. I even see her. You know, she's very reserved, very shy, very reserved, and um, even taking some jabs at some players. I mean, she she's just building that confidence, and you can really start to tell that on the court. Yeah, you see. You see it a little bit in the hallways too. Just a little bit of the, you know, she's got her shoulders back a little bit, a little bit up, a little not puffy chested. What's, but I, what's funny is we just had that talk in the back gym after uh, <laughs> after the game about this this demeanor, this confidence, and you know, I, I try to describe the two teams that I saw tonight. There was two teams out there on the court tonight. And there was one team, Trinity, that every person that stepped on the court for Trinity just had this confidence about them. The way they, the way they shot the ball, just and, and if you just watch them, it, it wasn't a swagger about them, anything. It was just confidence. And then, in, with a lot of our girls, they're just. It seems like there's that lack of confidence. They just don't have that belief in themselves. Um, so we had a lot of talk about that at the uh, at the end of the game. And you know, until we start believing ourselves a little bit more, having that confidence, a, a, you know, even maybe a little swagger here and there. It's hard to step on the court and win games if you don't have that confidence in, in yourself. And once you get that confidence in yourself, then you can start believing in your teammates a little bit more too. And one thing, one other thing I noticed, and part of it was they had the lead, but even before the lead, they played uh, to me. And this is just I know again one of the things I noticed they played with a smile on their face. Like even when they're down, uh, Uten Bugard was out there just. She, she just looks like she's having fun. She's got you know, a smile on her face. Now and she's that you having say fun. that, I remember that. Yeah, she, there's a lot of times she's out there, yeah, with a smile on her face. I, it, it's fun to see, and, you know, I'm not expecting my girls to run around with a smile on their face, but it's moments like that that you see girls enjoying the game, whether it's going for them or not. And, but, again, that comes back to just having a level of confidence. And if you're confident in yourself, you're going to enjoy the, the little things a lot more. Um, I will open the mic up for you and, uh, and just give you – give you a crack and I know that you haven't had probably a ton of interaction with Sherry Joe but you know Sherry Joe was going to be somebody that was going to probably play somewhat of a role for you in some sort of fashion uh, or another next year uh, hopefully we she she's watching here tonight and you know it, 
the the treatments are, are a rough deal, so you don't know with sleep patterns and everything. But if she's watching tonight, what message do you have for her here tonight? We love you, Sherry Joe. Um, basketball is on the back burner right now. It's it's all about her and moving forward and her health and just coming back stronger and even better. She's she's a great kid, great head and our shoulders, very very hard-headed and if uh, she was here she would nod and give me that smile that she has um, so she's gonna she's gonna fight through this she's gonna come back stronger and better than ever I just know she will and uh, there there will be a role on our team for her moving forward uh, it may be the role that everybody expected and it may be a completely different role uh, but Sherry Joe knows that she's got a spot on our team uh, for, for as long as she wants it and, of course, we'll have, uh, I believe it's a bit of a gold out on Saturday night as the Jays take on. Saturday Wednesday. afternoon. Sorry, Saturday. <laughs> it's a matinee. I forgot. Yep, matinee. I, I know that it's an early game, but it's a uh, uh, matinee game as the Jays take on St. Mary's here in the Deb Campbell Memorial yep. Gym. Um, it'll be an entertaining deal, and, and uh, we won't dwell back on, on the George game. You guys were shorthanded and uh, just a tough deal, and I it, – it, it's just one of those deals that you just got to kind of play through sometimes. It was, but, you know, what was good is seeing some girls that don't normally play certain positions. You know, one thing that I picked up on was, you know, Larissa Poland was forced into a little bit more ball handling role that night. I thought she did I thought she did very well handling their press and beating their press, doing some things that she's not asked to do on a night in and night out. So, you know, there was – it was a rough game. Georgia Little Rock is a very good team, but – you know, there were some there were some good things that came out of that. I thought the girls actually that night had a very positive attitude and kept that positive attitude throughout the game. And that's one thing that we've been talking about a little bit more too is just enjoying being out there, enjoying the game, and staying positive, focusing on those positive things versus the negative things. It seems like a lot of times we, we have a negative mindset coming into a game because we're worried about screwing up, and then we screw up, and then we're worried about that. So what do we do again? We screw up, and, and then they're focused on that. And, it's amazing how just talking to people, and, and you know, it's just like I actually gave them the, the thing of buying a new car. When you're thinking about buying a new Suburban, guess what every vehicle you see? It's a Suburban. You'll see 100 Suburbans a day that yesterday weren't there. Yeah, they were. Now you're focused on it. You know, so it's just like, to, you know, it's just like tonight and any night that we step onto the court. If you focus more on the positive than you do the negative, more positive things happen. If you focus on the negative, more more negative things are going to happen. It's just it's just that mindset, and we're going to continue to work on that, and and uh, yeah, get things moving in the right direction. Good luck in the next few days of practice. You guys have hinting on Friday night, and then you come back here on Saturday. So thank you. Sir. I wish you the best of luck, and we'll hey, see you on we, Saturday afternoon. We gotta we gotta have a shout out, right? There's yeah, gotta be oh. a happy birthday shout out to the Ali Schilling. Happy birthday, Allie, wherever you're at tonight. Uh, sorry Matt wasn't able to take you out for uh, for supper, but it's nice to have him here too. So I hope you enjoyed your day, Allie. Coach, thanks for joining us. We'll be back after this. You're watching Jays and Tigers on Fuller Digital Solutions and Fuller Digital. Since the 1980s, Colbeck Incorporated has been a family-run business providing their customers with quality wood and feed grinding services throughout Northwest Iowa. Colbeck Incorporated knows that your time is valuable and they pride themselves on getting the job done in a prompt and reliable fashion. Local cattle feeders have been relying on Colbeck Incorporated hay grinding for 30 years and Brian and Kevin are proud of their partnerships they've built with their customers. Whether it's grinding, mulch, or hauling, call Colbeck Incorporated today and see what they can do for you. AgriVision Equipment has you covered with a wide selection of John Deere tractors in the area. Our experts can help match you with the right equipment at the right price. Utilize one of our convenient pre-built packages or build and customize your own with our JD Buy Online site. Need financing? No problem. Apply online in five minutes or less. Our team is ready to find the package for you. Don't settle for less. Shop in-store or online at agrivisionequipment.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you. First half stats, Corey Ma uh, Mason with two, Carter Wester with four, po James Postma with two, Dustin Hawkinsburg, Oxbergen, had 19 and he averages 19 won a game so if the Jays are able to hold him to zero in the second half which I'm, which I'm guessing is unlikely 
he will be up over his uh, his average. Trey Bugard with two. Trevor Teal on the Jays side with five. Dylan Lubin with nine. He had an impressive night so far. Landon Ryder with six. Nolan Teal with two. Gabe Wilchin with seven. And Dane Lehman with two. Jays trailed 10-11 after one and bested Tigers by two in the second quarter to be up 29-28. to 28. Thanks to Ag State Bank for bringing you tonight's scoreboard and shot clock. And thank you to Schuster Trucking for bringing you tonight's bottom line. Jays will start the ball, start with the ball here in the second half. It's Trevor Teal inbounds it to Lubin. Lubin over to Teal. Teal just inside the arc. Out to Lubin on the logo, dribbles now. Trevor Teal, three, no good. Rebound by Westra. Westra quickly ahead over the timeline, stops at the arc, kicks it out to Gronwig. Gronwig passes left. Now Westra near the top of the key. Westra spinning, stops at the free throw line, spinning again, kicks it out. Gronwig, three, rattles around, no good. Rebound. Quickly ahead and stolen by Westra. The rebound was by Wilchin and Westra puts up a floater and is good. He has six. It is 29 to 30 in favor of the Tigers. Lubin looking to get it up over the timeline and does. Bounce pass to Landon Ryder. Landon near the top of the key. Bounce pass left to Lubin. Lubin double teamed. Jays facing a 2-3 zone. Trevor Teal cross court to Landon Ryder. Landon bounce pass in. Now that ball stolen away by Hawksburg and he is fouled by Trevor Teal. That's gonna be Trevor's second, team's first of the second half. Ball inbounded to Gronwig. Gronwig. To Luke DeYoung. Luke DeYoung in the corner to Mason, back out to DeYoung. Hawksbergen tried to get it to Pierce Gronwig and threw it out of bounds right in front of the Tiger student section. Inbound from Kramer to Lubin. Lubin looking to get it up over the timeline, does to Ryder. Lubin with it now. Kicks left to Ryder. That one's stolen away by Gronwig. Gronwig stops. Hawksbergen puts it up, count the basket, and the foul. Hawksbergen now with 21. 32 to 29. The foul. <laughs> Excuse me, foul on Landon Ryder. That's his third, team second of the second half. Hawksbergen trying to complete the traditional three-point play, can't. Lubin up over the timeline with a right hand, bounce pass to 24 Langle. Nope, it was 34 Langle, sorry. Lubin with it now near the top of the key, 5.53 left to go. Wilchin puts up a jumper and in. Wilchin hit that one from about 10 feet. Gronwig, bounce pass to Westra. Westra thought about a three, now Gronwig in the near corner. Gronwig, baseline, poked away by Wilchin. 34, Langle able to pick it up. Lubin brings it up over the timeline with a right hand, 525 left to go here in the third. Nolan Teal gets it to Dane Lehman. That one block from behind, puts it up, puts up his own rebound. Westra, or I'm sorry, Hawksbergen gets it to Gronwig. Westra in the lane, puts up a floater, no good, rebound, Nolan Teal. Nolan able to bring it up. Jay Bickford, thank you. Thanks for watching also. Nolan Teal with it now, over to 34, Langle gets it into Lehman. Lehman, right side of the paint and walk with a basketball.
Groenwig, right side of the paint, stops at the baseline, turnover to Nolan Teal. Nolan quickly ahead, has a runner with Dane. Nolan instead puts it in himself, and Nolan Teal has four. 35-32. Groenwig able to save that from going out of bounds. Lehman comes away with it. Lehman fights through Westra and able to come away with it. It's going to be off of Lehman now, out of bounds on the turnover. And a timeout, 30 seconds. You're watching Fuller Digital Solutions. All the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you tonight. Tigers trail the Jays 35-32. The inbound will be right in front of the Jays student section who needs to get back up in the bleachers as the ball is put into play. Reed Groenwig near the top of the key. Hawksbergen. Hawksbergen might be the only Tiger that doesn't come out of the ball game. Hands it off. Now kicked over to Trey Bugard. DeYoung to Hawksbergen. 15 on the shot clock. And Nolan Teal picks up his fourth. Team's third of the second half. Second, uh, third quarter, rather. I don't know if I'll ever get used to that. Fouls by quarter rather than by half. Evan DeYoung with it now, near the top of the key, getting a screen from Hawksburg, and it's passed to Hawksburg now. And Wilchin picks up the foul, lunging for the ball. And of course, <laughs> hit the official in the back of the head. Of course, when you uh, when you get me by myself, you might get some meanderings uh, on my own here too. As Zach Harpenau comes into the game from for Nolan Teal, deep thoughts with Matt Schilling as the ball is inbounded to Reed Groenwig. Groenwig brings it up back over the timeline, guarded by Lubin. Out to Hawksbergen, and he's directing traffic. Gets a screen, handoff to Reed Groenwig. Reed kicks it out between the legs of Trey Bugard. Hawksbergen with it now. Gets a screen fadeaway jumper near the free throw line. No good. Lehman comes away with it. Lehman will bring it up the court himself. Hands it off to Lubin. Lubin had to kind of leap over the timeline. Lubin with it, kicks left, 34 Langle to Wilchin. Wilchin guarded up real well, drives baseline, puts up the shot and is fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. We have the first team foul for the Tigers in the second half. And the first foul overall for James Postma. Wilchin puts up the first, rattles around and out, no good. 2.43 left to go in the third. It's 35-32 in favor of the Jays. Gets ready to put up the second, knocks it down. Wilchin now has 10, 36-32. Hand off to Hawksbergen. As the ball came up over the timeline, gets a partial screen. That ball on the floor, Zach Harpin on, and we're going to have a tie-up to remain Tiger basketball. Reed Groenwig to inbound the ball. Hawksbergen, jumper, no good, rebound, Zach Harpin on. 
Zach will bring it up the floor until it gives it to Lubin. Lubin brings it over the timeline. Passes right to Wilchin. Wilchin steps in. Harpenau, 34 Langle. Wilchin, three, good. Gabe Wilchin with 13. And we've got a timeout from Zach Van Ginkle. It's a full timeout. We'll take it with him back in 60 on Fuller. Staying healthy means enjoying life's best moments. And the best way to stay healthy is to make your routine appointments. Whether you have new symptoms or it's time for your annual exam, the providers at Floyd Valley Healthcare know and listen to you. So you'll get the care that you need. We help you stay healthy by providing preventative care, finding health concerns early, managing chronic conditions, and connecting you with specialty care close to home. Don't miss a single special moment. Make your appointment today. When it's time to choose a bank, the choice is easy. Prime Bank is the bank for you. With all the conveniences you want in a bank, including a mobile app and online account opening, Prime Bank also offers you pick checking with no monthly fees or minimum balances. And the best part is you get paid for everyday banking transactions. That's right. Prime Bank's you pick checking. We pay you for your everyday checking account transactions. Choose Prime Bank. It's the bank for you. Earn more your way with Prime Bank. Member FDIC. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you on the call tonight. Jays lead this 39-32, 2-10 left to go here in the third. Hawksbergen bringing it up over the timeline. He's up over his average, but only is, has two points here in the second half as Lehman steals that one away. Lehman bounce pass over to Wilchin, stolen. It's going to be off of Evan DeYoung, and it will remain Jays basketball with 1.57 left to go here in the third. Again, a sparse crowd of relocation for tonight's game. I don't think a lot of people were planning on attending tonight as Wilchin puts up the three, knocks it down. Gabe Wilchin has 16 on the night. It's 30, I'm sorry, 42-32 in favor of the Jays. Hawksbergen with it now near the top of the key, passes left, back to the top of the key to Evan DeYoung. Evan DeYoung to Hawksbergen, Hawksbergen passes right. Reed Gronwig, Gro Gronwig back out to DeYoung. DeYoung, left side of the paint. Caught by Bugard. Hawksbergen, and we're going to have an offensive foul by Postma. A bevy of subs. A fleet of Tigers. Is that a pride? I think it is a pride. As Lehman inbounds it to Lubin. Lubin brings it up the near side, gets it over the timeline, bounce pass into the corner, and Trevor Teal stops at the baseline. And it's going to be, they're going to say it's off of Trevor Teal, and it'll be Tiger basketball. Pierce Gronwig brought it up over the timeline. Now Westra. Westra, jumper off the back iron. No good. 34 Langle with a rebound. Gets it to Lubin. Lubin double teamed in the backcourt. He'll run it up the far side of the court. 34 Langle in the lane. Puts it up. No good. Rebound by Luke DeYoung. And he has fouled in the backcourt. Foul is on... 34, Langle. That's his second. DeYoung at the line, puts up the first, knocks it down. I'm being informed that it is an ambush of Tigers as the second free throw is up and good.
Gronwig brings it up over the timeline to Hawksbergen, Hawksbergen to Westra. Westra in the paint, harassed by Harpen on. Lehman comes away with it. Lehman tried to get it over to Wilchin. Ball on the floor, Wilchin near the baseline. He stepped on the baseline. It's a turnover with 26-3. Gronwig, Pierce Gronwig brings it up over the timeline with a right hand. Bounce pass to Luke DeYoung. Luke over to Westra. Westra dribbles toward the baseline. It's going to be out of bounds off of Westra, and it will be Jays basketball with 8.1. Trevor Teal and Landon Ryder will come into the game for Harpenau and Langle. Inbound to Lubin. Lubin to Lehman. Lehman with five. Wilchin puts up the three and hits it at the buzzer. I wonder if he called Swish before he threw it up. 45-34, back in a minute on Fuller. Since the 1980s, Colbeck Incorporated has been a family-run business providing their customers with quality wood and feed grinding services throughout Northwest Iowa. Colbeck Incorporated knows that your time is valuable and they pride themselves on getting the job done in a prompt and reliable fashion. Local cattle feeders have been relying on Colbeck Incorporated hay grinding for 30 years, and Brian and Kevin are proud of their partnerships they've built with their customers. Whether it's grinding, mulch, or hauling, call Colbeck Incorporated today and see what they can do for you. AgriVision Equipment has you covered with a wide selection of John Deere tractors in the area. Our experts can help match you with the right equipment at the right price. Utilize one of our convenient pre-built packages or build and customize your own with our JD Buy Online site. Need financing? No problem. Apply online in five minutes or less. Our team is ready to find the package for you. Don't settle for less. Shop in-store or online at agrivisionequipment.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you. Jays with an 11 point lead. Remember to like and subscribe this YouTube channel. You'll know whenever we go live. We will be live on Saturday at 12.30 as the girls take on Remsen St. Mary's. Lubin with it near top of the key. Lehman, free throw line, spinning, jumper just in front of the free throw line. No good, rebound, Lehman kicks it out. Now Lubin, pass left to Ryder. Ryder able to gather it in. Lubin with it now. Kicks it into the corner. Three, good, Trevor Teal. And it's now 48 to 34 in favor of the Jays. Bounce pass in, down low, put it up off the backboard and in for James Postma. He now has three, it's 48 to 36. And they're going to call an offensive foul on Ryder. That's going to be his fourth foul. Handoff. Now on the corner, Luke DeYoung. Young over to Pierce Gronwig. Bounce pass in, down low to Mason. Gronwig, three, good. Pierce Gronwig with his first basket of the night. It's a three and it's 39-48 in favor of the Jays. 6.39 left to go in the fourth. Three point, Trevor Teal. Trevor with 11, 51 to 39. Hawksbergen, and he is fouled at the top of the key by Trevor Teal. Hawksbergen at the top of the key, gets it in the paint. James Postma puts it up, no good, rebound, fought for, fought for by two Tigers and travel on the way down by Luke DeYoung. Up 
34 Langle inbounds it. Three people came after Lubin. Trevor Teal with it now in the front court. 6.08 left to go. Gabe Wilch in corner. Three off the iron. No good. Rebound by Lehman. And I think we're going to have a foul on. I think it's going to be on Luke DeYoung. That's going to be DeYoung's second. It's going to be the first of the fourth quarter for the Tigers. Ryder's going to come back into the ball game, and Landon Ryder has four fouls. 51 39. Lubin, long two, good. Dylan Lubin with the two. It was deep, but it's still just two. He has 11. It's 52, 53 to 39. Quickly down low, count the basket, and the foul for Postma. Postma has five, and he's going to try to execute the three point play the old fashioned way as Lehman picks up his third. Thanks to Ag State for bringing you tonight's scoreboard and Schuster Trucking for bringing you tonight's bottom line. World's finest chocolate for the J Club and Fine Arts as that missed the rim. But that is underway. See your favorite Galen Child to order. It is by order only. The children will not have chocolate on them. So make sure you get that chocolate ordered, preschool through 12th grade. It is not a requirement, but if you're interested, make sure you reach out to them. Otherwise, reach out to chocolate sales at galencatholic.org as Ryder launches that three, no good. Rebound by Pierce Gronwig. Gronwig brings it up the floor quickly, stopped by Lubin. Hawksbergen, corner, three, no good. Rebound is gonna be on the floor. And it's going to be on the Jays. It'll send DeYoung to, well, the foul was on Lehman. That's his fourth. And DeYoung was the one fouled. And Kramer will come into the ball game for Lehman. Ball inbounded to Hawksbergen. DeYoung, that ball was swatted out of his hands there by, for just a second by Kramer. Gets it down low, and that's going to be Trevor Teal's fourth. 5.07 left to go in the fourth. Jays with a 12-point lead, 53-41. to 41. Nolan Teal will come into the ballgame with four fouls for his brother. And Postma will go to the line. Puts up the first, off the back iron, no good. Thanks to all of our sponsors for making tonight's action possible. Five Star Communications, of course, as well as AgriVision, Ag State, Floyd Valley Healthcare, Holstein Manufacturing, Colbeck Incorporated, Marcus Lumber, Cherokee Government Jobs, Prime Bank, and Sitzman Construction. Couldn't do it without those fine sponsors as Postma hits his sixth point. It's 53 to 42. Lubin brings it up the floor. Passes right to Nolan Teal. Stolen away, and Westra is fouled by Kramer. It's going to be Kramer's second. Their officials are talking about an intentional. They're going to say it was not malicious or an, or a uh, intentional. It's going to be two shots for Westra. Westra getting ready to put up the first. Puts up the first, rattles around and down. Carter Westra now with seven, 53-43. Tigers closing the lead. Westra puts up the second. Off the front iron, no good. Wilchin with a rebound. Lubin brought it up over the timeline. Back to Wilchin in the corner. Was gonna get it down low. Instead, we have got a foul 
And that one is going to be on, I believe it's on Hawksbergen. His first, team second. Gets it in quickly. Nolan Teal puts it up and in. Nolan Teal has six. 55, 43, 432 left to go in the fourth. Hawksbergen over to Westra, back to Hawksbergen. In the paint, DeYoung, no good. Rebound by Kramer. And we will have a foul. Foul's going to be on 40, Evan DeYoung. That's his first, team's third. Kramer gets it in to Wilchin, who get passed it over the timeline. Now Lubin, top of the key. Jay's content to burn a little time. Lubin gets it in the corner. Nolan Teal. Nolan back out. Kramer, three, misses everything. No good. Rebound by Bryce Ubengut. Utenbugard. Lubin, and he is fouled in the backcourt. Foul's going to be on Carter Westra. That's going to be his second, team's fourth. Next one's bonus land, and both teams are being the, the bonus, and the Jays will call a timeout. We will take a full timeout. Back after this, you're watching Jays and Tigers on Flow Digital Solutions and FlowDigital.net. All the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs and the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Forget the ramps and hassles when hauling. They are built to tilt. Tilt bed trailers made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. We're excited to now offer one of the best tilt bed trailers on the market, ranging from 22 to 28 feet in length. And like everything we manufacture, these trailers are built to work last and make your life easier. All with confidence when you hook up to a tilt bed trailer made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. Visit us online today at HolsteinMFG.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you on the call tonight. 3.47 left to go, 55-43 here in the fourth. Quickly ahead to Nolan Teal. Nolan had a two-on-one, puts it up and in. And the Jays lead this one by a score of 57 to 43. Hawksbergen bounce pass over to Reed Groenwig. Evan DeYoung back to Hawksbergen. Has Westra in the paint. Westra falling down, walks with the basketball. And he is not happy with that call. Jackson Kramer will be the inbounder for the Jays. And Teal, Trevor will come in for Kramer. Kramer hasn't played a ton tonight. I'm wondering if the knee might be bothering him just a little bit. Wilchin drives toward the baseline. Trevor Teals, shots no good, rebound by the Tigers. Hawksbergen with it now in the paint. Jays has done a nice job shutting him down here in the second half, and who picked up the foul? Foul is on Dylan Lubin, smallest, smallest man on the floor. To the line to shoot two will be Hawksbergen. Hawksbergen knocks on the first. He only has three points here in the second half. So an impressive defensive showing by the Jays. 57-54, 3 left to go. Hawksbergen puts up the second and knocks it down. Did not quite understand that other than it was a counted basket or counted free throw for Hawksbergen, who only has four in the second half after 
putting up 19 in the first half. Wilchin brought it up over the timeline, swatted at by Hawksburg, and we're going to have a foul by James Postma. That's going to be his third. Team's fifth, and Wilchin's going to go to the line to shoot two. Zach Carpenter and 34, Aiden Langle, will come into the ball game. Wilchin getting ready to put up the first. Puts it up and knocks it down. Wilchin now with 20. 58 to 45. If Drew Bickford is driving home right now, appreciate you listening, not watching the end of this ball game as Wilchin puts up the second and knocks it down. 59-45, Wilchin with 21, Hawksbergen loses the handle on it. And on the floor, we're going to have a timeout by Coach Zach Van, Wink Van Ginkle. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. See you back on the other side of 30. AgriVision Equipment has you covered with a wide selection of John Deere tractors in the area. Our experts can help match you with the right equipment at the right price. Utilize one of our convenient pre-built packages or build and customize your own with our JD Buy Online site. Need financing? No problem. Apply online in five minutes or less. Our team is ready to find the package for you. Don't settle for less. Shop in-store or online at agrivisionequipment.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you on the call tonight on Folio Digital Solutions. Remember to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. You'll know whenever we go live, like we will on Saturday for a matinee, 12.30 tip time for the girls, boys to follow. Westra to be the inbounder. Westra looking for a little help. Bounce pass into nobody. Hawksburg and ends up picking it up. Hawksbergen, that one's stolen away by 34 Lingo for just a second. Westra, that one blocked by Zach Carpenter. It's going to be out of bounds off of Hawksbergen. 2.42 left to go in the game, 59-45. Trevor Teal is begging to come back into the ball game as Gabe Wilchin brings it up over the timeline. Gabe stops at the free throw line, passes left to Nolan. It's going to be off the hands of 34 Lingo and out of bounds. 2.34 left to go in the ball game. Appreciate everybody who joined us, wherever they might be tonight. Carter Westra with it now. Carter with the left hand. Hands it off to Hawksbergen. Hawksbergen free throw line jumper off the back iron. No good. Rebound fought for. And Nolan Teal comes away with it. Nolan able to do a little crossover. Zach Carpenter fought, uh, it was blocked from behind and Westra comes up with it. Westra spinning, guarded by four Jays, and Lubin is going to commit the foul. Dylan Lubin has two. It's bonus land right now for the Tigers. Westra at the line to shoot two. Looks up, puts up the first. Front, back, front, and down. Wester with eight. 59-46. Wester gets ready with the second. Puts up the second off the front iron. No good. Rebound fought for. It's going to be Jay's basketball. 2.02 left to go here in the fourth. Jay's with a 13-point lead. Trevor Teal, the inbounder. Full court press from the Tigers. Looking to get it in. Gets it into Wilchin. Wilchin will bring it up over the timeline. Wilchin stops in the paint. Puts up a jumper from, I don't know, 10 foot. No good. Rebound by the Tigers. Hawksbergen brings it up over the timeline. In the paint, right side of the lane. Puts up the shot. No good. And is fouled by Wilchin. Wilchin picks up his second. Again, it's bonus. So it's 149 left to go in the ball game. Hawksbergen at the line to shoot two. Puts up the first, front, back, and down. He has 24, it's 59 to 47.
Puts up the second. No good. Rebound by Wilchin. Wilchin ahead to Trevor Teal. Teal stops just before the timeline. Nolan Teal with it now. Out to Lubin. Lubin dribbles. Stops. Passes it out to Trevor. Trevor squares up a three. No good. Rebound by Postma. Postma will bring it up back. Coast to coast. No good. Rebound by Lubin. Lubin is fouled in the backcourt by Pierce Gronwig, and that's going to be his second. It is still bonus time. 125 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Jays with lead 59 to 47. Lubin getting ready to put up the first. Misses, no good. Langle and Harpenau will come into the ball game. Trevor Teal and Dane Lehman come out. Lubin gets ready to put up the second. Lubin puts up the second and knocks it down. Sixty to forty-seven, one nineteen left. Hawksbergen puts up a jumper just inside the free throw line. No good. Rebound fought for. It's going to be, I think, a held ball, and it will be Tiger basketball. Pierce Gronwig will be the inbounder for the Tigers. Pierce gets it in to Postma. Back to Pierce. And he traveled with the basketball as Nolan tried to avoid stepping on 34 Langle. Kramer and Lehman will come in. Langle and Harpenau go out. Kramer inbounds it. Swipe from behind was Wilchin. 103 left, 63-47. Hawksbergen drives toward the baseline, puts up the shot, and in. Hawksbergen now with 26, 60 to 49, and in the front court, Lubin is fouled. Lubin fouled in the front court, 52.1. He'll be at the line to shoot two. Lubin puts up the first, rattles out, no good. Same two in and out. Same four, I guess. As Lubin gets ready to put up the second. Puts up the second. No good. Rebound by Hawksbergen. Hawksbergen brings it up quickly. Passes left. Three-point attempt. Westra. No good. Rebound. Fought for Langle. Lubin across the timeline to Harpenau. Harpenau left side of the paint. Puts up a left hand and in. Zach Harpenau with his first two points of the ball game. 62-49. to 49. Hawksbergen. Jumper. No good. Rebound, Langle. Lubin in the backcourt. Just needs to get it across the timeline. Wilchin gets it across the timeline. Jays can sit on it. No shot clock on now. Lubin with it in the near corner. Lubin will just dribble it out, and it's going to be a 62-49 to 49 final. Back with the final stats after this. You're watching Fuller Digital Solutions. Catholic in Lamars, Iowa instills respect and Christian values in a caring environment for students preschool through 12th grade. Teachers and staff go above and beyond to provide a high quality education and are dedicated to student success. We are a community striving to live God's word each day through academics, service opportunities, athletics, and so much more. Galen Catholic School, in partnership with Spalding Catholic School, all are welcome to experience excellence in education and leadership through Christ. Sitzman Construction, Lamar's, general contractors you can trust with the job you need done, when you need it done. Call Jeremy at Sitzman Construction when you need a remodel or a complete build, and they work with EPS Buildings. 
Jeremy takes the time to know what you need. Past clients say he's reliable, honest, fair-minded, and reasonably priced. Contact Jeremy at Sitzman Construction. Jeremy and his crew will satisfy all of your construction needs. 712-540-2731. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you as the Jays are winners of this game, 62-49. to Final stats, Pierce Gronwig with three, Corey Mason with two, Carter Wester with eight, Postma with six, Hawksburg and held to 26, only six points in the second half. Luke DeYoung with one and Trey Bogard with two. For the Jays, Trevor Teal had 11, Dylan Lubin an impressive night with 12, Landon Ryder had 6, Nolan Teal with 8, played a lot of the game with 4 fouls, Gabe Wilchin had 21, Zach Carpenter with 2, and Dane Lehman with 4. That'll do it from the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. A reminder that the, um, then the uh, Mission Honduras tailgate is at 11 o'clock on Saturday, it's mac and cheese and chips and t- uh, taverns and dessert bars. It's a free will offering. Make sure you check that out. Girls varsity game starts at 1230, boys to follow. For the entire Florida Digital Solutions staff, I'm Matt Schilling saying so long from the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym.